Hey folks, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world, or even good evenings. Uh, today is April 14th, 2024. My name is Eric, and this is my host, my co-host, Aaron Ra, and this is The Sunday Show. How are you doing today, Aaron? It's all right. Happy to be on The Sunday Show for the first time ever. That's great. Uh, I'm hearing an echo because I got another tab open. There we go. I just fixed it. Uh, say that again, Aaron. How are you doing? It's all right. I'm happy to be on the Sunday show for the first time ever. I've been on the, I've done Skep Talk a few times, but uh, this is the first time oh, wow. for this one. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. It's my first time co-hosting or rather main hosting. So uh, yeah, it's a first time for both of us. So I think this is going to be a fun show today. Oh, uh, we be gentle. are, uh, yeah, please be gentle. It's my first time. Uh, <laughs> no, that's great. Um, yeah. So we're, uh, we're currently waiting for some calls, but, um, for those of you who are just tuning in new to the show or are, you know, old viewers and they want to call in and participate, uh, we have two ways for you to call in. This is a live call in show. Uh, the first one is you can call a phone number, which is uh, country code one area code seven, two, zero, six, one, nine, two, two, Eight eight, or you can join the link down below in the description. It's uh, www.callinstudio.com/show/the-line. So uh, put that out there. We'll wait for some callers to hopefully uh, connect in. Um, so yeah, Oren, um, your first time co-hosting on the Sunday Show. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about your channel, uh, upcoming projects, anything interesting on the horizon for uh, for the content you're putting out? I just came from. Uh the North American Reptile Breeders Conference, uh, it, which was here in Dallas this year, and uh, couldn't buy anything. But there was a, that, that was, it's always fun to go into a room that's like, you know, thousands of, thousands of snakes and just like window shopping. Yeah. And very, very pretty stuff, a lot of it. As far as stuff that's on my channel, I, I like to do phylogeny. I'm terribly interested and always have been. Uh, but it is, yeah, I find it strange that it's a subject that I am so interested in that most other people don't know anything at all about. So that kind of perplexes me. I was in second grade the first time I saw uh, what would be called today a dendrogram, you know, showing how all these different uh, different lineages of organisms are related. And I, I just thought it was obvious that, you know, I mean, believers will often use arguments like, you know, if, if they want to, if they want something to be different, then they'll, they'll put up two things and they'll say, well, this, this is this and that is that. And you can see there are differences. Uh, but then if they want it to be the same, they'll say, you know, well, obviously it's the same kind, right? So they just, mm -hmm. it's different or it's the same just because they want it to be. And all yep. shrimps are like all, all other crustaceans because they were made by the same creator. But it's the same creator who made kittens. So why aren't kittens like shrimps? So the, the, the logic mm -hmm. just falls apart. But what I, what I like to try to do is to get the third option up, play the Sesame Street game of one of these things is not like the other. Get any three animals, two of them are going to be more closely related than the third. And even if you get closely related ones, you're still going to be able to distinguish them. Goat, cow, sheep. The goat and the sheep are closer, right? The cow is the odd one out. And just, I just saw stuff like this, you know, when, since I was eight years old and I, and I started, you know, just following the subject to see how things are related. And it's remarkable to me how badly the rest of the planet does this. When I tried to explain taxonomy to somebody, when I first got started on, on activism at all, this guy says, oh, okay, so, so a spy, so an octopus is a spider because it has eight legs or it's an ink pen because it produces ink. And I'm, I'm just stunned at the, 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 the the potential stupidity that some people can wield when they really need to be stupid 
If stupidity is how you've held your belief system up to now, this is how you defend your faith, you can be impressively goddamn dumb. Yeah, I've always been impressed by the double standards that can be applied to such things. Like you mentioned earlier, how uh, creationists will uh, point out, well, these two organisms are far too different to be related, but then they'll, in the next word, say, well, we see similarities and that points towards a creative being. And, uh, you know, if you go deeper into like the genetics and also the phylogeny behind it, um, we have things like shared viral DNA with our, 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 ape ans- or our, our ape cousins. And we have uh, commonalities in our DNA that can all point back to common ancestors. What you got there? That's a black sacrament imperial stout. Imperial stout. Mm, wow. I just, I just yeah, love I got the some, cane. Uh, <laughs> it looks great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have some Bodhi's off uh, in the fridge waiting for me uh, for after the show. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I, I've, I'm also impressed by sometimes the double standards that we can see on, on display from those pushing religions, but also like professional apologists, how one standard will apply to one argument, but then all of a sudden when that standard uh, suddenly works against them in another area, that standard goes out the window. Uh, I think I saw one earlier today where basically Gary Habermas was basically saying, oh, uh, we see such consensus in the form of a head count with the way that the New Testament is interpreted these days that we can trust, you know, uh, 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 certain aspects of that story. But when it comes to the Old Testament and how, you know, head count there, uh, consensus says that, you know, uh, Abraham, Moses, Isaac, those individuals likely didn't exist. All of a sudden, it's it's oh well head count head count no longer matters when we're considering these things because um, it, it's inconvenient and yeah somebody somebody accosted me recently that. somebody accosted me recently with it with just the New Testament right the, the whole Hebrew Bible's been removed it's just the New Testament and I said okay so shall we turn open to where Jesus says that you must follow every jot and tittle of all those old Mosaic laws and if you don't follow if, if yeah. you don't follow every bit of every one of them then you will be called least in heaven. And you just you just you clipped them out. You don't even know they're there. Yeah. All right. Well, you got a couple of callers uh, lined up, but before we get into that, I uh, just want to make some announcements for uh, our future shows here on the line. Uh, we have uh, our next week all scheduled up on the website. In fact, uh, you can go to the line. Uh, well, this channel right now and go to the community section. You can see uh, Jimmy has a new podcast all set up. It's called Live on the Line. And uh, episode zero has already been released. Um, and episode one, I believe Jimmy has said that that episode has either already been released as if in the last hour or so, or it's going to be imminently released here pretty soon. Um, this is a, a the Live on the Line. It's going to be a, uh, let's see here, what do we have the notes here? Um will be available to pay Patreon members immediately, commercial free. Those who are on Patreon, Patreon, but on the free tier will also have access to it, but they won't have like immediate access. You'll have to wait a little bit. Uh, but uh, you go over there and check that out. And uh, according to Jimmy, it's a, it's a fun show where he calls co-hosts on the line. He also calls other uh, uh, prominent figures in the atheist and skeptic community just for impromptu conversations. It's kind of out of the blue. Um, so yeah, go check that out. And then for the rest of the week here, we have a bunch of delightful shows coming up. Uh, So right now you're on with me, Eric and Aaron. Later on this evening, we're going to have the Sunday show uh, after show, uh, the encore. Uh, So that's going to be with Forrest Valkai and John Gleason. And then tomorrow we're going to have a Skep Talk. That'll be with Shannon Q and Aaron Adair. And then on, uh, let's see here, the 16th, which is going to be Tuesday, we have uh, our new show, Chewed Gum. That will be with Eve Was Framed and Allison Lube. And then uh, further future, uh, on May 4th, we're going to have a uh, a, a RFR fundraiser uh, that's going to have the Unholy Trinity and a bunch of other guests. So mark that on your calendar. And a really easy way to track that is to subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell icon, and uh, turn on notifications is what I do. Uh, my phone chimes two, three times a day with uh, shows that I'm interested in watching, and you can add this one to that as well. So yeah, let's get into some calls. I think we have a few waiting. We've got four waiting. Uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, the first one here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect you in. This is Charles uh, from Pennsylvania. His pronouns are he, him. And... Uh, 
Well, actually, no. Was that the first one? That's fine. We'll go with Charles. I think I think the ordering was reversed on the on the website here. Uh, so his topic is Putin using the Orthodox Church to attack LGBTQ individuals. Uh, hey, Charles, how you doing? This, you're on the Sunday show. Hey, Eric. Hey, Aaron. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Hear you. Um, well, first of all, before I get into anything, I just want to say, Aaron, um, huge, huge fan, and I love and I love the hair. I got myself a head of hair like that too. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Um, everything I want to talk about is pretty much just what I said in, in the bio. I've noticed, and many people have noticed, is that Putin has used the Russian Orthodox Church to attack LGBT plus in, individuals particularly badly, even before the war in Ukraine started. And after the war in Ukraine started, he continued using the Orthodox Church to, to, to try and cause, effectively, hate crimes against them what's your take on all of this uh yeah i mean i think it's historically very common for dictators and others who have an agenda to weaponize religion weaponize the church it's a it's a good tool for a rallying cry to unite people against whatever enemy you think uh, they should be rallied against yeah, um, stalin did the same uh, thing by the way yeah yeah you know, so stalin was supposed to have established communist russia as an atheist state but he was using the Russian Orthodox Church to his political ends. So he allowed them to continue and worked with them. And part of that, of course, was the, 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 the hatred, which wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal, the, the anti-gay hatred, because back then the, the homosexuality was considered an abomination by most places or, or, or illegal in many governments. So they didn't have like any kind of gay rights as a, foot, as a stepping stone to even get started. You know, so it wasn't quite the, the issue that it is now, but that was still going on then. And uh, got, a one. little bit of a tangent on that, a little bit of a tangent on that. Um, uh, I just recently, yesterday, just watched a, a really interesting video. Uh, it was on Genetically Modified Skeptics Channel talking about how Dune 2, the, the recent Dune 2 movie, accurately captures the way religion and the struggle for power kind of intertwine and feed in on each other. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the whole Dune franchise. I'm actually relatively new to it myself, but in it, there's a Messiah type figure. His name is Paul, and he's basically stranded on a planet. And he people there think he's a Messiah figure. And no matter what he does, whether he denies it or he accepts it and enforces it, it just simply feeds into this 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 uh, uh, narrative that he's a messiah figure and how that in turn also becomes a tool for him to use in his war against the uh, the greater powers in in the galaxy and uh it's 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 really great because the 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 i think frank herbert the author he wrote this stuff 50 60 years ago and this type of study around you know how religion and war and such kind of inter, inter, intermixes and feeds in and loops back on itself the studies around that are actually fairly new, uh, according to his video, about 30, 40 years. So Frank Herbert was actually quite ahead of his time with the way he captured that. Um, you have to be careful about so, that. Um, have, you, have you read the books? Have you read um, Frank actually, Herbert's books? I have not. not no, read the Dune books. Okay, but see, sometimes also, the, the movie version is, is dramatically different than the book version. Star Trek Troopers, or you know, Star, Starship Troopers is a Starship good example Troopers. of that. Where, where yeah. what the movie did was almost entirely opposite of what the original author did, at least for the first half of the film. So it was, yeah. I, I almost, I don't know that I even made it to the end of the film because I was, I was told that there was supposed to be a twist, but uh, I, was get, I was pretty disgusted because it was an anti-war message in the book and it was very much pro-war, pro-tribalism in the movie. And so... Some like with the first Dune movie. I mean, everybody that that loved Dune in the books hated the movie for various reasons, and then there was the, the religious overtones. But they seem to be different than the way you're prescri you're describing them now. So I noticed what, that when they make a remake of a movie, they'll often take a completely different stance to it. Like Alice in Wonderland is a perfect example, where suddenly they're they're celebrating insanity where they were decrying it. Um, yeah. It's funny that you mentioned Alice something like to, that. Alice has to make believe six impossible things before breakfast. 
She has to make herself believe impossible things before she can bottle the Jabberwock. And of course, in the original story, they were making fun of people who do that, that that was considered insane. Go ahead, Charles. Um, actually, it's funny you mention that because I'm a really big fan of, uh, of Lovecraftian horror. And there was a interesting thing that happened after Lovecraft himself died. So, like, Lovecraftian gods, they're not meant to have morality. They view us as essentially like bacteria. They just don't have any feelings. One of the people that wrote for Lovecraft after he died was an author named August Derleth. August Derleth was a Catholic, so he couldn't he couldn't perceive like things not being in a gray area of morality. So he wrote Lovecraftian gods to be like black or white, good or evil, which sort of detracted from the original purpose of these gods existing in the first place. Yeah, have you ever seen that? There was a video series uh, in the '90s, I think it was called "Calls to Cthulhu," and it was a Cthulhu hand puppet that takes these these uh these phone calls uh and you know, you know, like questions for cthulhu and somebody calls in to say you know that they're, they're, they're praising him that when he when he arises then he's going to devour all of the uh all of the un, uh, all of the unworthy and, he, and uh, cthulhu's answer is uh yeah um just the unworthy ones <laughs> anyway we got know. a little off topic there talking about movies uh but um, go ahead, go ahead, Charles. Give your final words on that, and then we can maybe cap off the conversation about Putin and his wielding of the church. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to go on on Aaron's points of it is ridiculous how in every Lovecraftian story, cultists worship Cthulhu, want him to rise from the ocean, but don't realize that he's also going to devour them as well. Yep. A little bit of an oversight there, bud. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's an interesting subreddit, uh, uh, leopards ate my face. Um, basically, people tend to uh, not realize that when they are acting in a way politically, voting a certain way or uh, promoting certain policies to affect people they don't like in a negative sense, like you know, I, uh, you know, whether it be immigration or women's rights or religious persecution, people who ha target others and want to inflict either harm or political persecution or social persecution on them, they don't realize that the way they vote and the things that they're enacting can eventually be turned around and used on them. Um, there's, a, there's a severe lack of foresight. There's a really great subreddit called Lepers Ate My Face, uh, which is basically sheep voting for the leper party because they want those sheep to get it. But then later on, they get it because they're also sheep. Um, so anyway, with, with the Putin um, and, and Russia and the Orthodox Church over there, yeah, I mean, it's 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 no surprise that he's doing something like that uh, and and you know wielding that power. I think any astute political figure uh, that's essentially a dictator would need to know how to do that, or else they you know they can't hold on to the masses if if, if the masses aren't convinced that God is on their side or, or God is aligned with their political uh, 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 leader. We see the same thing here with uh, you know Trumpism in the United States. We see how Trump is like he just released that that gaudy Bible of the USA um, scam recently. We can see how he's trying to play into that and how he's trying to rally uh, evangelicals, religious fervor, trying to insert himself as a central figure in that, really play into the whole, you know, I, God sent me to do this or God sent me to set this country straight. Uh, we we just the more we just ridiculous it is. Very common. The more worshipped he is. Yep. That, that's yeah. the stunning I, part. There's like, there's no... There's no limit on these people. When, when you have all of these yeah. trading cards that show him as a massive bodybuilder and he's like a superhero, right? I mean, just they take that shit seriously somehow or, 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 or they appreciate it in a way that I can't. You know, I, I, I'm thinking, how does anybody listen to this guy for five minutes and not realize, one, he's lying, two, he's a crime boss, three, he's an idiot. But, but they worship him. And I think you just list, I think he's all of, of the above. Yeah, but but there's people in my family absolutely literally worship him. That they, they think that he was sent by God, that he's the next coming. So when he comes out, when Trump himself says that he was sent by God, and only I can save you, I am your savior, he says shit that ridiculous, and the people who used to call blaspheme have suddenly forgotten the meaning of that word. They just believe yeah. that he so is their savior. 
And now, now we've got people in Christian churches across the United States who are criticizing their pastors because the, the pastors are quoting Jesus and the things that Jesus says are too woke. Woke. That's the problem. They don't like Jesus because Jesus is woke. They want a more Trumpy Jesus. So just do the quotes about sell all your clothes to buy swords. That, that Jesus they like. All right, Charles. Yeah, uh, any final of, thoughts before we, uh, before we let you go? Yeah, go and uh, the way that you've described the family in uh, like videos I've seen, I'm not surprised that they worship, literally worship Trump like like a messiah. I have people like that in my family, but they're like minor minor footnotes, like one or two. I'm assuming is that is that the way you describe it, is that it's most people in your family. Yep. The lion's share. Yep. Trump exists to fulfill in fulfillment of prophecy. And they'll even point out and in the Bible. From, uh, yeah, where, where it prophesies Trump. I, I also can show in the Quran where it prophesies Trump, but they don't they don't respect that for some reason. Well that and must from uh, my point that of view, this is all this is all really like new and foreign to me because I, I'm an ex Jehovah's Witness. Uh apolitical Religion and politics don't mix. In fact, all the political uh, governments on the world are put there by God, but tools of Satan. So, uh, yeah, whenever I get into a political discussion, I always find it fascinating because um, these are things I never considered uh, as I was growing up. It's still like super. Yeah, one thing to bear in mind if, if you're if you're apolitical, if you're just coming into this, one of the other mm -hmm. logical fallacies that, with it, that come with religious extremists, I'm sure you're aware of this, is binary thinking. So mm -hmm. black and white. If you don't believe one story, it means that you believe it's false. Well, that's that's not true. You, yep. you can you can maybe it's true and maybe it isn't, but I'm not convinced, right? So there, it's yep. possible to hold that position. If I don't like candidate A, it doesn't mean that I love candidate B. Yeah. Right? It's just weighing them out. There's this one who's trying to destroy everything and this one who's mildly inept but would be infinitely better. <laughs> And would help us to fix some other things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a that's definitely something common we see in in especially in the United States with you know red versus blue, us versus them, our my team versus your team type thinking. Um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's yeah. a it's a preponderance of your values and a preponderance of the promises made by the politicians, and also a preponderance of the history of the parties and how they've uh, whether or not they fulfilled their promises, whether or not they they. Uh, acted fairly and in accordance with the system, or whether or not they are, you know, uh, following. The yeah, I, I wish I didn't have to identify as a Democrat. I, I you know, I, I would love to identify as something else. But I mean, what am I going to do? Go green? You know, if, when you get rid of the, the head of the Green Party, then I'll consider it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Charles. Well, thank you very much for uh, for calling in, and we really appreciate it. We're going to be moving on, and hope you have a good day. All right. Thanks. See you mm -hmm. later. All right. Goodbye. All right. Uh, okay. So our next caller, uh, we have Dave, he, him from the UK. He is a theist. Uh, he wants to talk about the people who gave Christianity a bad name and wants to know what to do about it. So, uh, Dave, welcome to the Sunday Hello. show. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. A little muffled, but you're fine. Okay. Okay, good. Great to be here. Great to see Aaron on the Sunday show. Actually, I'll agree with you on that. I enjoyed listening to your debates, Aaron, so it's good to see you here. What inspired me to call in today was um, about uh, a recent debate I had from a Christian perspective on whether presuppositionalism is harmful to Christianity, and I believe that it is. And my opponent, uh, well, I, I could tell you exactly what YouTube videos he must have watched in order to parrot presuppositionalists are the ultimate evidentialists. Oh, logic and reason, therefore God, therefore now that I've claimed them, I'm, you're borrowing from my worldview by using logic and reason. And he could not comprehend the idea that 
anyone could do that if I hold up a pen and say this pen is a pen and he says uh, how do you know it's going to be a pen five seconds ago he could not comprehend the idea that anyone could answer honestly with anything other than God and he couldn't comprehend my own answer which is that actually I'm sure you guys would agree with me that um, God is a candidate explanation for why the pen will not be a pen five seconds ago because God could change the pen into something else. But if there is no God, we might actually have a better reason to believe that the pen will be a pen because there isn't a supernatural entity that exists that could change that. And as a Christian, that was it was very disturbing to listen, actually very disturbing to listen to somebody chant a lot of completely baseless assertions, chant them extremely confidently. But what also disturbed me was, I mean, I'm not very old, I'm not going to say my exact age, but this person looked barely half my age and had completely swallowed the Kool-Aid. And I'm just wondering, like, how, how do you respond to that from either an atheist or a theist perspective? Well, from the theist perspective, one of the arguments that you could use is uh, and I did, I used this m argument myself with uh, with with uh, Cy Ten Bruggengate. He mm -hmm. made the argument that God spoke to him. God explains things to him in such a way that he knows it to be true, for certain. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. how yeah. did God explain this to you? Well, it turns out that God didn't actually explain anything. It turned out that, that he read the scriptures made the circular assumption that the scriptures are true, the way that he's interpreting them are correct. So unquestioned circular reasoning, which he admits to. Saiten so Bruggenkate yep. admits that, that his, he says that his, his reasoning is virtuously circular and says that ours is viciously circular because he doesn't understand what, it's, what it is to not. It, 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 uh, apparently reasoning. there's a difference there. Apparently it's yeah, virtuous I, when I do it, but vicious when you do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay when I do it. It's not okay when you do it. That's that's the the double standard there. But the, the, one of the things that he brought up was that he and I wish I I, I wish I knew the quote now because I could I, I wish I could reference it. But Saiten brought up that um, God has explained this to me, meaning that he read the scriptures without question and just believes what he believes because he believes it. And it says so. God has explained this to him in such a way that he knows it to be true. I'm like well. All right, so does that mean that Jesus is the same essence as God, that Jesus is a physical incarnation of God? And and Saiten says yes. And I said, okay, well, this that's fascinating because in the 1700s, uh, um, yeah. the guy who invented algebra, Isaac Newton, right? Oh, yeah. Isaac Newton yeah. said something perilously similar that God spoke to him through the scriptures in such a way that Isaac Newton knows this to be true. He knows it for certain, right? Yes. Isaac knows his thing for certain. Sir Isaac Newton knows his thing for certain, except that the conclusion is different. Yep. So Isaac the conclusions is now, are radically different. Jesus is not the same essence as God. So what's the difference? Between both, both men claim God has spoken to me through the scriptures and explained this in such a way that I know this for certain, yet they disagree with each other. That should be impossible. One of you is wrong. Yes. Now, is it going to be, with the one that is wrong, is it going to be arguably the most celebrated mind of all time? Is it going to be somebody who, <laughs> that, that many atheists have declared to be the smartest human ever in history Yes, or is it yes, going to be Saitan yes. Bruggenkate, who had to quit his own ministry because of sexual indiscretions? Yes, yes. As I, think any, I think the question self-answers, and on that you may be interested to learn that we almost, I almost got somewhere with this person whenever this person made the completely absurd claim I've never heard before, that God possessed Paul, when Paul wrote the letters to Paul, and it was actually God physically writing the letters through Paul's hand. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So I asked him why 1 Corinthians uh, contradicts 2 Corinthians. As um, Eric may know, it is 1 Corinthians that Jehovah's Witnesses use to justify disfellowshipping. And then 2 uh, Corinthians, whenever the Corinthians told Paul to fuck off, he wrote back saying, 
He wrote back saying, well, actually, I was wrong the first time. So if God somehow possessed Paul to write and to write the truth, how did he write two completely contradictory things in two letters to the same congregation? The response was, well, I don't actually know. I'll need to look up the scriptures. But he could recite Romans 1, 18 to 20 at the start of the debate. So obviously, he had a very, uh, very selectively chosen what scriptures to read before he came to his conclusions. And apparently I'm a blasphemer because I don't believe that God literally possessed Paul and used his hands. Yeah, those little uh, uh, arbitrary conditions for whether or not you're a true Christian or not, or a blasphemer or not, based on such like yeah. what you just mentioned, yeah. how you know the the notion that God directly possessed Paul. Of course, you can always flip it on its head and say, well, okay, if you think God possessed Paul to write those things, what if I were to tell you that I think a demon possessed Paul to write those things? And in fact, those words are heretical, or they they shouldn't be in the Bible. Like how, like let's say we have these two points of view. Unless we have we're in front yes. of people presenting both of these to us as fact, what mechanism do we have as an outsider to determine which is true and which is false? Because they can't both be true. Yeah. It's mutually exclusive claims, but they can't both be false. So how do we determine, you know, how, how do we determine how we know these things? Um, yeah, how do yeah, we determine uh, and on top one of that, A, B, or neither? Yeah. And on top of that, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, New Testament scholars, it's it's generally accepted that I think about half the Pauline letters are considered forgeries because of various markers with, you know, writing style, uh, vocabulary, yes, yes. timing of the discovery of the letters, like, you know, okay, and that raises a whole other question of, okay, if half of these are genuine and actually written by Paul, and let's just simply say, okay, for sake of argument, let's say Paul was, in fact, inspired or possessed by God or whatever, and actually was writing on God's behalf, why did God allow yes. these forgeries to get in there alongside them and pollute the message like if he if god cared so much about these the, this, yes. this message being pure and accurate and saving as many people as possible how could he allow such a thing to happen um yes. yeah all kinds of like rabbit holes can go down with that yeah the, one of the things yeah, that bothers me about the presuppositionalist argument is when they when they bring up uh, somewhere in romans i think that that, that says that that, that it, the atheists know that god exists uh, 18 so, to 20, the, the, the verses that he could recite from memory at the start of the debate, to very coincidentally, 18 to 20, I asked him, what do you say to a Hindu or a Shintoist or a Buddhist? And for once, he was silent. He didn't he didn't go down the full side 10 route to say they secretly are the Christian God. But he did say Unitarian Christians don't exist. So there's a bit of circular reasoning there where you have to refer to reality as creation. And so you can then assume a creator where, of course, reality would not require a realtor. But then there's also a number of <laughs> in the Bible where it talks about people who do not believe. The Bible is admitting that there are people who do not believe. And uh, let me see, for example, uh, the, the 16th verse of Romans, the, the same the same one you're getting 18 from, to go to 16, it says, to everyone who believes, which of course implies that there are those who do there not believe. people who don't. Yeah. And then there's a number of other places yeah. who say that the Gentiles don't know God and that Samuel didn't know God and and the Pharaoh didn't know God either and, and so forth. And then God himself in Jeremiah 9, 3, complains about people who don't know him. <laughs> so the presuppositionalists yes, yes. are picking and choosing their own selective uh, quotations. Yes, it, it, yeah. it's the very, it's the, uh, the the stupidest words that I've ever seen put in front of each other. But I did use this phrasing, perhaps to my detriment, suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. Well, you've put a few words in front of each other, but you haven't said anything remotely coherent, nor have you ever uh, even begun to give us a reason why anybody would have anything to gain by suppressing the truth if it was if everybody secretly knew without having to reason, take on faith or anything else, then why would they, what, what would be the motivation to suppress it if you genuinely believed it or knew it to be true? Because you're going to hell if you suppress it and you know you're going to hell. Why would anybody do that? It's completely irrational. Why would we want? Yeah. Why would we disbelieve in God in order to sin if we secretly believe that God exists? And the only thing mm -hmm. that really pisses God off is when you say that He doesn't Indeed. exist. That's the only way to to surefire damn yourself without forgiveness. So if you love sin, 
become a Christian, get yes. forgiveness, and keep on sinning and keep getting forgiven. Ironically, if you're a Calvinist, you have more of a re which a lot of these precepts are. You can suppress God as much as you like because you're predestined anyway. I can suppress God as much as I want and I'll go to heaven anyway. It doesn't matter. I can suppress God as much as I want. I'll go to hell regardless of whether I do. It doesn't matter, which is it's ironic that you get these people like Cy Tenbrook and Kate who are devoted Calvinists who believe in complete predestination and then peddle this kind of nonsense that it does. It, it, it harms Christianity to me far more than having debates and conversations with atheists. So I can have a debate or a conversation with an atheist and I can come out and I can say, these are some good points. These are things for me to think about. And it, it's usually cordial. And then you see how these presuppositionalists behave. And it it produces more doubt in my mind than listening to Aaron's own debates, to be honest. <laughs> So today, today, just an hour or so before this show started, a Christian yes. told me that they have never met an atheist who cared what the truth is or who was in pursuit of the truth. So they'd never met an atheist who was in pursuit of the truth. <laughs> and, and what they meant by that lie was that they never met an atheist who wanted to assume that the lie of Christianity was true. They, they, they said they've because they're assuming that if you believe my lie, that's pursuing the truth. Today, just an hour before the show began, a Muslim told me that Muslims are in pursuit of the truth, which is why they've adopted the religion of Islam, and that Christians do not care what the truth is. They, don't, they are not in search of the truth, and that's why they're going to be forgiven. <laughs> Christians and atheists both are, are, are going to be damned because neither of us care, because we won't assume the lie of Islam to be the truth. So I want to get the, the Muslim from Twitter and the Christian from, from Facebook. I would love to get them in the same format. Yes. Have them both explain to me and each other what the fuck truth means. <laughs> they, they, they may give the same answer. They may give the same answer that truth uh, is what comports with the mind of God. But then, then it's like, okay, well if, God, well, if the mind of God on its own determines truth and not what we can see, the example I used whenever somebody tried to use the hard solipsism question was, uh, the walls of my room are green. I can know that I perceive the color green correctly because the color green is not an abstract floating color. It is the result of waves of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we can measure whether we are perceiving the electromagnetic spectrum correctly and that's how we know who is colorblind and who is not colorblind and there was and there was no answer it's like well, truth exists in reality independently of where that reality came from where the reality came came from or whether or wh whether, whether it might have came from anything is a completely different question from if there is a creator what is he thinking surely yeah I don't know what to contribute to that. It, it, it becomes, how do you verify something objectively? How do we know, you know, that, that, that ham tastes better than chicken or vice versa? You know, it, and I, I would say that... Are, and I, pref I yeah, prefer that your answer to the question. Yeah, objectively, metal is the best music, yep. but you see so little of it in the top 40s. <laughs> yeah. No, I do prefer your answer to the question of how we know anything to be certain than some other people. You have said in the past that... You cannot conclusively 100% objectively disprove leprechauns, but we have done so much that we can safely say that the leprechauns are never going to exist. They're not going to jump out of the woods somewhere. So 99.999999999 or whatever percent. Does it have I to be 99? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy yeah. with... I'm happy with there just not being any evidence of leprechauns and leprechauns being impossible. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And I don't have to say that because I can't get to 100%, I don't know that. And once you don't cede that ground to these presuppositionalists, they lose the best tool in their arsenal. The same if you say that words exist or that, words, or that there's some meaning that you can't rename a pen and expect everyone to say that that's the same thing, that your new thing exists because it's just a pen. It's Kyle Adams' favorite example. Um, once you don't cede these points, 
then they lose a lot of their debating power very quickly. Yeah. So uh, it, 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 I, I think we covered that, how to deal with the presuppositionalists. I agree that the yeah, presuppositionalism yeah. harms Christianity. I'm perfectly okay with that because Christianity is something that, that doesn't need to be preserved. So yeah, there are there are reasonable there are more reasonable Christians certainly than the precepts, but the precepts when you when you when you're so extreme that you make regular creationists look to you know I mean you're just dragging the whole thing down with you. I mean we're we're creationists are embarrassed about you, you know. Yes. Then you're working to my end. <laughs> you don't you 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 wonder if they are a psyop sometimes. If I wanted to pretend to be a Christian while creating atheists, I could not. It would be hard to do better than to assume I'm right, to assert I'm right because I know I'm right, to try to break the Guinness World Record for the amount of times I can say worldview when I'm supposed to be discussing this Christianity true, and just aggressively alienate everybody. Um, I could. Uh, it, it would be hard to, to be a better performer as a literal psyop. Yeah, and then and then once you finally admit that the jig is up, by then you already have your twenty million dollar house and your matching twenty million dollar Cessna Citation jet. Yep, yep. Uh, or uh, remember, you can't fly economy because economy is a tube full of demons. <laughs> yes, as Kevin. <laughs> <Cook said. laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, have we have we satisfied your question? Because I think we have another well, call. Yeah. I think we've had a, a natural conclusion, and I don't want to hog the line. It was it was great talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you kindly. Thanks very much. Okay. Bye bye. All right, Chris, who's Hello? next up? I'm back. I think. What what happened to you? My computer took a big fat shit, I guess. Um, it just completely froze, everything happened. shut yeah, off. Same thing happened to me a, a, little, a couple of minutes ago. Suddenly the, suddenly the screen's just off. Not, not, my, not my computer yeah. screen, just this screen. This and is I had to a, go log in again. This is oh, the by the way, time some, some, people in the chat, some people in the chat called me out. They said that, that, uh, that, that Newton invented calculus, not algebra. I'm surprised that I said if, if I actually said algebra because I know better. I know that he invented calculus. I know the monumental difference between calculus and algebra. I don't know how I would have said I, algebra. I, I figured I figured it would just misspoke. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. for the record, uh, it's believed that uh, uh, algebra was invented by the ancient uh, Babylonians and also the Egyptians like, man, 1600 plus years ago. It's uh, been quite a long yeah. time. Yeah. Cornerstone of civilization, algebra. All right. I am nearly back up 100% again. Okay, cool. I think I'm back. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Um, yeah, I've had this computer for like three years. It's been rock solid. It's my gaming machine. And then just a week ago, it did this to me. And now it just did this to me again. So I don't know what's going on there. Clean the uh, but anyway, thanks for... And, and check the float on your carburetor. I'll probably do that. I'll probably maybe give it a trip through the dishwasher too, just in case. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> my my computer i i love my computer it's in a it's in a little micro etx case has a handle on it like i could pick it up and take it with me if i need to go somewhere it'll fit right in that dishwasher and i'll get it squeaky clean okay. Anywho, okay let's uh thank you for covering for me by the way i i tuned in on the phone to make sure things were were, were okay and uh yeah thanks for handling that uh all right let's go on to our next caller then uh we have uh max uh pronouns he him in india he's an atheist uh, he asks, what is the one thing that confirmed to you there is no God? Hey, Max, you're yeah, on the I'm actually with us. Yeah. I'm actually with us. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah so can you, hear me? can you, uh, can you, yes, yeah, we Max, hear you. We can have you, not spoken can you... before, have we? No, we haven't. We have? Okay. Okay. No, 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 we haven't. We have not. Okay. All right, we have. I got a call so, from India last week, but it sounded like someone different. So I was going to guess it wasn't somebody I've spoken to before. All right, so how yeah. are you holding so, up uh, being an atheist in India? <laughs> so my parents never pushed religion on me, and uh, yeah, that's that's the reason. Where where in India are you? Anywhere around Vijayawada? I'm in New Delhi, the capital of India. 
Gotcha. Uh, the, the last caller was too. Uh, VJ, what I just wanted to point out that I don't know if you're aware of it. They do it. They do a World Atheist Convention every other year, uh, and usually it's in VJ Iwata. And they have an atheist center there, which I was surprised. It's the only one in the world. They have an atheist center that has their own block of apartment buildings, and they have their own hospital and museum and all of that. It's and it's an entire atheist community, physical community. I didn't know that. I was fascinated. I got to, I got to visit it once, uh, twenty eighteen or sixteen, something like that. But anyway, uh, continue with your yeah. with your with your question. Yeah, Max, uh, right. can you so can you a... ref, uh, can you can you give us your question one more time just so we have it completely correct before we address it because uh, it was a little mangled in the in the description here. So I want to be, hear from your mouth. Yeah. So um, this question is for both of you. Uh, so from like converting from a religious person to an atheist person is like a journey. It doesn't happen in a day. It doesn't happen in a day. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Like in that journey, what what was that one thing uh, that made you believe the, that made you like strike that nah there can't be a god there can't be a god there like there should be a one thing uh, that that made you think that there can't be a god so I can I can start with my my uh, that specific event I can give you my examples so I I was an agnostic yeah I was an agnostic I I really didn't care about whether there was a god or not until I needed him. So I had a problem in life and I thought, let's pray to God, right? So I prayed to God for a month and nothing happened, right? And then I cursed the God for a month. I was so angry at God that I thought, if you're not going to help me, let me curse you for a month, right? And nothing bad happened. The problem didn't go away uh, and nothing bad, additional bad happened. So I was like, okay, there's no God for sure. And then, and then I came to know about evolution and Richard Dawkins. It was not evolution that... Did we lose Max? Yeah, Max, you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. you're back. Yeah, Go ahead. Back. So, so, it was not so evolution after, that changed your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I'll, I can I can go first. Um, so, I... The, the way the question is, uh, what confirmed to me that there is no God? I, I don't think anything confirmed to me that there is no God. Uh, I, for the most part, regard myself as an agnostic atheist. I don't believe a God exists, but I don't claim to knowledge that gods definitely don't exist. Unless you have a definition of God that is narrow enough and I can identify a contradiction inside of it. So, for instance... Yep. Um, I can give you a definition. Uh, I can give you a definition. Sure, sure. I was just going to give an example like the Triomni God paired with this world that we live in. I think that's a, a logically contradictory proposition that uh, you can have an all-knowing, all-loving, uh, uh, omnibenevolent God and a world like this at the same time. I don't see how that can be a possibility. So I can point at that God and say, uh, I'm confident this God does not exist. I will claim Gnostic atheism towards this God. But if, yeah, say if your definition the... is general enough, I, I will remain agnostic. Yeah, the Muslim God fails on its own accord. The Christian God fails on its own accord. They have their own issues. The biblical God in general, the God of Abraham, uh, it's all all have their own issues of contradiction and inconsistency and impossibility, right? So the, you can't say that everything is possible because we know that things, you know, not everything is. So in order for there to be a possibility, in order to say whether something is possible, we have to have a precedent or parallel or verified phenomenon indicating that such possibility exists. We don't have that for God. We don't have any evidence for God. We don't have a single logically valid argument for God. There's no good reason to believe in a God, but we've got a fuck ton of really good, solid reasons not to, to know that Every version of God I've ever heard of and practically every claim from any religious person of all the absolute truth that they all claim that they're all bullshit. These people don't know what they're talking about. So no possibility, no evidence for, there's nothing positive about it. And then we just have all the evidence against. And there's a lot of evidence yeah. against. And one of them would be the fact that we don't have souls. Bigger, I think, than not having a God, because people will say, well, you can't test for a God. Well, you can test for souls. Yeah, they're supernatural, but there's requirements there. 
And we not only do we not have evidence of souls right precisely where we would have had evidence if they were real, it's not just that it's missing from right the very point that it would be, it's that we have substantial evidence against it. I've talked to a bunch of neuroscientists and neurophilosophers and so forth, and they all come to the same conclusion, there is no soul. There's no portion of you, yeah. and physicists too, Sean Carroll gave a presentation about this. There is no way for your consciousness, yourself, the essence of who you are, to leave your dead body and either wander off on its own or occupy somebody else's body. There's, there's no yeah. facility, there's no mechanism, there's no possibility of any, all of that is bullshit, and we know where the bullshit came from. People didn't know that air was particulate matter, but they knew you would, you would die if you couldn't breathe. So they thought that your soul, your spirit, oh, the breath of life, yeah. that's what they thought it was. You know what I, you know what I think? Like, why do religious people refuse to let go of their uh, religion and beliefs, even though evidence uh, shows the otherwise? It's, it's difficult for them to let go because it's difficult to think that when you die, there's nothingness. Because I understand when I die, I'm just unconscious. Yeah, I don't yeah, have so any I, problem. I, with I understand. That. Yeah, I think I have a bigger problem with the notion of when I die, I continue on forever and ever <laughs> and ever. And there's no way to just, there's no way to let it end. You can't constantly ascend. There's no way you can keep on learning forever. You, there's, you, you got to cap out somewhere and, you know, a billion times a billion squared to a Googleplex, you know, that, that you just can't keep doing this. Just let me fucking die. Wow. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cap it off with that. Then we'll move on to, uh, we have a couple of Thea's callers lined up. Um, but yeah, I yeah. think, uh, I think, I think the need for a hope, meaning and purpose, I think, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a huge hurdle to overcome because, uh, especially in the, here in the United States, Christianity is a predominant religion. It offers many things like you're going to see your loved ones again. You're going to live forever. You're going to be free of your illness and sickness. You're going to see the people you don't like suffer forever. Um, those can be very powerful motivators to uh, turn off that critical thinking, ignore contradictory You'll have a evidence. mansion. You'll be rich. The streets are made of There's, gold and yeah. your dick will be bigger. There, there's so many things on the table to gain, but and, and that can that can blind people to uh, critically evaluating these claims and actually, you know, uh, seeking good argumentation and evidence for them. Um, and on the flip side, you know, as an atheist, I don't have anything to lose. If I'm if I'm if I'm wrong about my atheism, about my position that you know the omni triomni God doesn't exist, if I'm wrong about that, and I'm told that I'm wrong, and I'm given good evidence, good argumentation, I have so much to gain. Um, I have the ability to. Oh, but you'll uh, go to hell then. Well, no. If if, if I if then. well, it, it 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 depends. It depends if I d decide to worship this god or not. Uh, likely, I wouldn't. If it's the god of the Bible, I likely wouldn't worship it. But let's say it's just a general triomni god that maybe the Bible is just simply wrong, and there's some other general triomni god, or maybe maximally traded god. You know, not not necessarily omni, but just maximal. Um, I could, if I was presented a good argument and good evidence that that God exists, that, oh boy, is that exciting. I have a new life form that I can uh, explore and get to know. There's probably a whole new realm called the supernatural that we get to learn about. Um, I get to uh, have fewer uh, bad, uh, uh, fewer incorrect assumptions and beliefs about the world that I live in. I have everything to gain if uh, a God can be proven to me to be true. Um, whereas on the flip side, like I said before, religious folks have a lot to lose because these religions make so many promises and it's 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 tuned to appeal to your emotions to appeal to your needs as humans it feeds into your insecurities uh, you know we're all humans we all have insecurities you know we're we any one yeah, of us could die tomorrow we could all die tomorrow i mean it's it's yeah. religion's tuned to feed into that and that's a really hard hurdle to overcome but uh all right max well I hey think. thank you for uh tuning in and and asking us that question um we're going to go ahead and move on to our theist callers so thank you so much all right thank you so much thank you so much Yep. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, all right. So um, before we get on to the next calls, I'm going to maybe go through some more announcements one more time. Uh, we have uh, plenty of other shows for the rest of the week. We uh, have that brand new podcast called Live on the Line that uh, if you are a patron member, uh, $5 or more, you'll have instant free access to, commercial free access. And uh, okay. if you're on the free tier on patreon.com, uh, you'll have um, delayed access, but it'll eventually come to you and you can... Uh, enjoy that new show. Um, 
And I think that's uh, all we got for right now. So yeah, feel free to call in if you still are waiting to call in. Uh, phone number and the link is down below. And we're now going to open up the floor to Justin. He, him in the United States. He is a theist. Uh, has an answer to the question. Uh, I'm sorry, take that back, has an answer to the God question and wants to know the host's opinion on it. So, Justin, welcome to the show and lay it on us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you said theist. I said deist uh, in the screen. Oh, deist. Yes, so, okay. Yeah. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, so deist. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay. So this is just an idea that's warmed its way into my mind and I kind of want a good skeptic to give it a good thrashing to see if it's actually worth leaving in. Um, okay. So basically I asked my, I asked myself, what would it take for a God to actually exist? Um, so I came to the conclusion it would have to be conscious. So then I asked what, what is consciousness? And the simplest answer I came up with is energy flowing across pathways. Um, which there's a caveat there, but I'll continue on. So then I wondered what would it take for something to be omnipotent? It would need to have infinite energy flowing across infinite pathways. Same goes for omnipotence. And then I tried to think, is there anything in that's at least somewhat accepted by science that could fulfill that quality? And the best thing I could think of was the multiverse, which I hate, but what it is and so my conclusion basically came to if you if the multiverse was conscious then you would have a being that's eternal all-knowing and powerful but it can't really do anything because it's done everything yeah wouldn't that be, a, uh, a closer to, wouldn't, that be wouldn't that be closer to pantheism yeah. because you're basically assigning uh god to be everything, essentially the multiverse, which would be everything that exists. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've just never yeah, but on the really other side of that. settled on a good definition. Yeah. So Thor, is he omnipotent? Mm -hmm. Hera. Um, is from what I know of Apollo. Hermes. Not really well versed in ancient um, okay. mythology when it comes to God. So, no, none of these gods are omnipotent. Are... Okay. So okay. to be a god, you don't need to be omnipotent. What about the concept that we are all entirely imaginary, that we are figments of God's imagination, that, that all the reality that we perceive is actually the dream of Brahma, and that when Brahma awakens, we will all cease to exist? The question there being... If we only exist when Brahma is unconscious, then how is God consciousness? Well, I was just basically trying to just go as simple as I could. Gotcha. If something is conscious, if, I mean, for omnipotence to be possible, something would have to be conscious. Well, the, the pantheistic God seems to be a non-conscious entity. Uh, and I like the way the Tao Te Ching put it. You know, nature acts without intent and so cannot be said to be benevolent nor malevolent to anything. But one thing that every God that, that was ever worshipped, all the, the hundreds or thousands of gods that were worshipped by millions of people for however many centuries, they all have these three things in common. They're all anthropomorphic. They all have human characteristics. Not that they're human, but they're cognizant. You can talk to them. They can understand what you're saying. Uh, they all have um, they all have magical powers, right? What what you would call miraculous, right? Supernatural equals magical. Yep. Same thing. And they're immortal. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't die. Take special means to kill an immortal. They don't. Immortals don't die of old age or cancer. It, it, it takes something special to kill it, kill an immortal. So they're all magical, immortal, magical, anthropomorphic immortals, and that's that. Thing, that includes the Bible God, which really pisses off the the the, the theist for Abraham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Justin, um, I think I think I mean it, it can be fun to sit there and and ponder, you know, um, 
the universe, multiverses, how it would map to perhaps our idea of what a god would be. Um, but it really comes down to, and, and, and just kind of on the flip side, like you were mentioning, you know, uh, you're, you're talking about a, a god that would be infinite in energy, uh, has energy crossing pathways, and you want it to be uh, uh, all powerful, uh, the omnipotent portion of that. So you, you're thinking, okay, it's the universe or it's a multiverse. Um, I could do the same thing with the tree in my backyard. I can say, oh yeah, my tree in my backyard, uh, there's energy contained inside of it. Um, it has pathways through it. Maybe the, 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 the fibers of the, the, the tree, it goes from the ground to the trunk, to the branches and then the leaves. And there's a cycle there. I can, uh, I can, I can look at that in the backyard. I can even maybe, you know, like, like, uh, 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 sit there and drink a couple beers or, or or smoke a joint and sit there and say, wow, look at this. This 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 fits my idea of what a God can be. Um, and then I can sit there and say, okay, well, my tree must be a God because it fits these ideas. Um, I can do the same thing on a much smaller scale. So th the question really comes down to what can you demonstrate about it? Are there any tests you can uh, uh, run on it to, to, to uh, either confirm or falsify your idea? If you are wrong about it, how would you even know about that? Because, uh, Generally in science, um, I think maybe universally in science, if an idea isn't falsifiable, the idea is not considered scientific uh, in that if you can't know how you're wrong about an idea, then it's going to be a useless proposition because you can't determine whether you're actually wrong about it. You can't really determine whether you're right about it. Um, is, is there any tests or anything that you could think of that you can maybe run to see if what you are uh, uh, proposing or what you're thinking is true? Yeah, the thing is, I think the God question is an untestable question. So you have to rely on philosophy to try to answer it. And philosophy, you can only ever get a possible answer. It's not like science where you get it. Yeah. At least a sound explanation I, to it. I heard a really good quote. I'm going to butcher it, but I forgot. Um, but when you're talking about strictly just the metaphysics or you're just talking about philosophy and you're actually presenting any evidence to the table, those tend to be very useless ideas. Um, they're, they're great to generate ideas that might be testable later on, but if you can't do anything with it, if you can't confirm or, or, or falsify any of it, it, it is really just a cloud of words. Um, uh, but no, I agree with that. Uh, certain gods may be falsifiable. You know, for instance, the, you know, the God of the Bible supposedly performs miracles, supposedly uh, uh, performs great acts for, um, for his followers. Those potentially could be tested. They're, you know, if a God has some type of physical effect on reality, then that effect can be tested. Um, and if those, according to some Christians, if those effects can be invoked by prayer, then that itself can be tested. But the problem is with a, with a deistic, pantheistic God, that's just out there and we have no way to communicate with it. We have no way to determine its presence. We have no way to measure anything about it. Um, assuming that such a thing is possible, you could be right, but how will you ever know you're right? And if you can't ever know you're right about it or wrong about it, then it's generally a useless idea. And we might as well continue on as if that, that God doesn't exist. Yeah, no, I get that. Like just playing off the whole multiverse idea, we could be sure. in a reality that's totally locked in so we can't ever leave it and then we're totally locked out from everything else so we could never really know maybe a good first step and we could never even I know really I'm, know if the multiverse existed i mean yeah i'm being a little tongue-in-cheek here i was going to say before you can get to this god you first have to demonstrate that a multiverse exists um so you yeah. can get started there and i don't expect you to answer that question obviously because you know our best scientists are just hypothesize these things and we're we don't even know how to test such a thing yeah, um proof but Doctor yeah so Strange doesn't exist Unfortunately, <laughs> you can't prove that Doctor Strange doesn't exist. Yeah, he could be hiding from us. He could be. He could be playing his cards so right that it's just he's just pulling the wool he, over our he, eyes. He could be anywhere in the multiverse. Can't prove that, that Darth it Vader doesn't exist either, because you'd have to search every galaxy far, far away, and you'd have to do that a long time ago. Yeah, but you can skip planets with sand on them because he hates sand. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. So Justin, <laughs> so Justin, any last words before we let you go? And we're going to move on to the next, uh, next caller. Anything you want to close off with? No, I, you gave me some stuff to think about it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Cool. Justin. Yeah. Have a good afternoon. You guys too. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. So Amarg is telling me that it's live on the line, but I could have swore Jimmy earlier told me that it's live on the line, but Amarg is making much more sense. So I don't know. I don't know what to think anymore. I, I think, think Jimmy uh, already lives on the line. Yeah, he does live on the line. It's his life. 
Speaking of which, um, uh, I didn't get a chance to see Live Jimmy, but I was actually down. Yeah, I was actually down in Austin, Texas, just uh, six days ago for the eclipse, and uh, uh, didn't unfortunately get a chance to meet Jimmy. But I got to stay an evening at Matt and Arden's, and they showed me their reptile collection, and we enjoyed uh, some board games of Forest Valkai, and then we got to enjoy the eclipse the next day. And uh, their their reptile operations just amazing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I had a, yeah, had a really. I, nice I hardly have any compared to them. I think I've got seventy five snakes, and that's it. Only seventy five. <laughs> yeah, uh, they probably. I don't know. I can't. I can't speak exactly how many they have, but I definitely think it was more than 75. I, I, they have over 250, 200. Over 200. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I believe it. Um, so yeah, that was a, that was a real delight to go down there and, and hang out with them and, and to see all that and got to play, like I said, board games with uh, Matt Arden and Forrest Valkai. And that was super, super duper awesome. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the line con is going to be a thing here in the near future. We can uh, uh, do all that again. Yeah, that would be okay. Fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, let's move on to our next caller. Uh, we have Richard, uh, he, him, in the UK. He is a theist. Uh, delusion of self-impeding truth of God. Delusion of self-impeding truth of God. Uh, let's go ahead and connect them. Richard, you're on the Sunday show. Welcome. Hello, how you doing? It's all right. You know, um, I, I, I was hoping to speak to Aaron as well. Uh, is what. Um, made me want to call in because i find him a very interesting person if he, if, he, if he wanted to i'd like to speak to him in private and maybe we can make a private video but let's see let's see if he likes what i say right first of all um i'd like to say that everything that i talk about i, I have experience on i don't find it on youtube i don't regurgitate stuff everything i'm gonna say i've experienced right no, um, now the, the thing is, right, the uh, reality, right, does not work well with a thing called a self, right? Because self isn't real, right? Self is not a real thing, right? Now, when we live in this thing called a self, we, we, we live in um, uh, thousands and thousands of opinions that make up that self. Only experience can dispel questions, right? So what, so what I'm saying is, right, um, that Buddhism, let me take Buddhism, right? It's what, where I learned this thing about self or non-self. So we're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're <laughs> referencing <laughs> Buddhism, then you're saying S-E-L-F, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Are you near yeah. Liverpool? I, I, I found out about. Bo Sorry. Are you are you near Liverpool? Sorry. Never mind. No, I, was just... I live in Birmingham. I've got a, bro Birmingham. I've got a Birmingham that, accent. That be my next guess. I've never been to Liverpool, but I've been to Birmingham. I know that you know that the accent is similar. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I I, I, I was accused of being Liverpoolian one day when I was visiting Glastonbury Tour. I say accused because. Uh, I don't think I sound like a Liam, but <laughs> I'm wrong. Well, I'm American. And I don't want to. I don't want to sound <laughs> limited yeah. experience. But anyway, but, go ahead. So you're saying self, S E L F, right? So, okay. Um, I, 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 when I, I was in prison, right, I did a five year sentence in prison, and I, and I, I asked, I spoke to God, right, and I got an answer. I, 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 I talked about that on the on the last show that you had with Paula Gere on it. Right, and um, Matt De La Hunty, and Matt kicked me off, right, because uh, because I got to my point about um, about your approach and 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 about how self um, or determines what your approach is, and and also how your approach determines what you find out, you know. So your approach is really important. But I didn't really get to the point because I told him all my story about how my prayer was answered in prison and then I started meditating and finding out about Buddhism, about what I'm telling you, about non-self, you know, because I'd had this answer in prison to this prayer where I'd, I'd said to God that I was afraid. I didn't ask God for nothing. I, I said that I was afraid. I was afraid for my children. I'm afraid what it says in the Bible. And... Um, <clears throat> He answered my prayer, and it's all there in that um, the last time I rung, rung you. 
But but my point is that after that, I, learned, I, I started meditating, right? So what I'm saying is that prayer and meditation are the two ways that I've found God, right? And 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 they're both and they're both excellent, right? Um, meditation, right? In Buddhism, right? There's these two things called craving and clinging, yeah. And those two so Richard, things. Say, Richard, before we, Richard. I'm going to cut you off before we before we get too much further down uh, the rabbit hole here. Um, how is this? How how do we loop this around to your initial statement here of delusion of self impeding truth of God? Um, because uh, I'm I'm trying to see what exactly are you coming to a question or a, a claim that we can address? I'm, yeah, this is what I'll say. Try to latch on to I understand here. where you're coming from. Right, I get your question totally. This is what I mean. Right, you see, spirit or the Holy Spirit. Right, as they say. Right, it's intelligent, right, it's smart, right? So so when you speak, it understands where you're coming from and what you want more than, you know, to, the, to um, which is which is more in, in, in appliance with reality. It, it understands reality. It knows that you haven't got a self. So if, if you ask a question and say, oh, God, please get me that loaf of bread. I hope it's there. You know, it might be there, but you might think God's done that. But God's not going to answer prayers like that or the, the Spirit. The, 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 the Spirit only answers prayers that are genuinely non-self. They are genuine and they are not really about you. That's what I okay, find. Richard. And okay, how, so when Richard, you, when you meditate right. on... I'll, I'll agree with you that God doesn't answer prayers. Just, just straight up. Yeah. Not selfish so, ones, not selfish ones. Right. Well, not so I, I spoke to God. I, I didn't pray to God. I just said, God, I'm afraid. This is what I said to him. I'm afraid. Right? That was my prayer. I said, I'm afraid for my kids. And and then and then and then the, the room started to change in front of me like I, like I was tripping on acid. And and then I saw this light and it, it changed my life and I, and it stopped me. It stopped me from, from being a heroin addict. So I was ten years heroin addict. I used to inject and everything, and now I've been clean nine years. You know, what what, what I'm telling you is the truth about non-self, right? And and your approach to it. So I, I I've heard. I, I understand, right? That most people are agnostic. They don't know, and they, and they spit on it and go, <laughs> it's a joke, <laughs> you know. And I understand that. Totally, I fully get that. People need proof. They need proof, and those are the two two ways. Uh, yeah. Meditation, meditation is a, is is a, is a healthy thing to do from for, for the in the for, for right, start. Richard. Right, 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 Richard, mind Richard. Let, let, me, let me jump Richard, in. Richard, I, I got to cut yeah. you off again, Richard. So, all right. So, from let what let I got, Richard. All right, if you on. were. If you were Liverpudlian, this might make a little bit more sense to you because there was a band that was pretty popular once upon a time that was out of Liverpool called the Beatles. The Beatles. Yes. The Beatles. And George yeah. Harrison, the guitarist, and John Lennon, uh, I think was the bassist, uh, they, they, they had this conversation, they made it, and it was, it was public record, where they said that they had personally met God, that all you have to do is chant the mantras, and God would appear. Not no, you wouldn't just get the feeling of the Holy Spirit. You would see God and hear God, and he's having a conversation with you. So John Lennon and George Harrison are both having a two-way conversation with God. The trouble is God's name isn't yeah. Jesus, it's Krishna. So they met Krishna. Right. And they're having a two-way conversation with Krishna. Krishna's very Sorry, think what? Krishna sounds very similar to Christ. What what yeah, what, what, what I'm, what I'm saying similar. to you, Roy, is that have you heard of Plato? Do you know that Plato believed in something called a divine? What would you call the divine? Uh, as I said in the earlier call, what it's would you a call that? Mind, 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 mind. Mind. Yeah, so Richard, Richard, I think Richard, what Aaron well, I think was trying to get to earlier, Richard, I think what Aaron was trying to get to earlier um, was you're making a claim about something you did and how it generated a result of you talking to God. And from what I've gathered, God spoke back to you in some way, either through the Holy Spirit 
or through some other force and you you feel that you were able to initiate contact with god and that god initiated contact back with you Aaron brought up two members of the beatles who do the same thing they meditated they uh, initiate a contact with a being they call God and a different God answered back than the one that you're claiming answered back. So uh, Arn and I are both outsiders oh. and we're both looking at these two claims. Can you give us anything that can, can that can uh, help us determine which of your two claims is true? Are you true? Are you correct about your claim that God spoke to you? Or are uh, uh, the two members of the no, Beatles correct in their claim? Think... Or are both you wrong? Can you give us anything like evidence? Um, I don't I don't think God really minds what you what you call him. Like as in the Bible, it says, "Does it matter what my name is?" Seeing that it's wonderful, and he does tolerate being called other names. It's like I said to you earlier about the spirit; it knows your intentions, and why do you then want to why? know? Why so then? Maybe the be the, the why were then very does the Bible say Beals were very peaceful people? Were why then does the Bible say that you're going to go to Beals hell? Beals if you very accept Jesus. Hold on, hold on. Why does the Bible say that you're going to go to hell if you don't accept Jesus as your Savior? If you're Jewish and you believe in God, you're going to hell because you didn't accept Jesus. And, and you accept, if you accept Should Jesus you as want. the Son of God, Should or an extension of God, or a physical incarnation of Jesus. God, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you accept Jesus as the Son of God, a physical incarnation or God, or a, or a partner of God, then you're going to Muslim hell because the Quran says that anybody who holds that belief is going to their hell. So if God doesn't care what name you call him, then why did he write three holy books contradicting what you're saying? Aaron, the reason why it says that, oh, that, G, that, uh, that only Jesus is, is, is that is because of what Jesus calls himself. He's the way, the truth, and the life. It is the truth that sets you free is the truth that only that God will accept only the truth and okay, uh, and hundred so, percent as well. If if, if, it, if it's got no ego in it, you know. All right. So if you the don't truth accept and humble, if, if you don't accept Jesus' ego, there is a God, hundred percent. I okay. can't prove to you there's a Christian God. I can, I hundred percent say you there is a God. You, you must accept. admit that and know that. But you just you don't, don't know which one it is. But I told you, God doesn't mind which one you call yeah, him as long as you're yeah, in yeah, he's, he's going to torture you for all either. eternity, but he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind I you call can't. him Jesus. He doesn't mind if you call him you know, Ahura Mazda, except that that's another totally different religion from somebody before Christians, before Jews even, who met and talked with God. And God told him a completely different story because God can't get his story straight. And he doesn't care what you call him, but he really cares a I lot don't, I, what you call him. I don't know what happens to you when you when you die or if you burn forever. I, I'm just telling Neither. you that there's a God and, and there's right. a way that the Spirit okay. converses hey, with you. He reads your heart. All right, Richard. Uh, let's yes. let's try this from right, a different I'll, angle. I'll, let's, I'll, thank you. Richard, hold on, yeah. hold on. Let's try this from a different angle, okay? Let's say right now, yeah, or after this show, okay? Let's say after this show, I go into a nice quiet room and I sit down and I meditate and I reach out to a God and that God reaches out back to me and says, hey, Eric, um, I'm God. In fact, I'm gonna give you a, a assurance and, and a good feeling that I am indeed God. And oh, by the way, that Richard guy you talked to earlier today, I'm actually not <laughs> talking to him at all. He He's meditating <laughs> and he thinks I'm talking to him, but I'm actually not. Okay, so let's say oh, I had a God a tell me that story. it's a hypothetical. Well, it's a hypothetical. You, it's, it's a wonderful story. You you yeah. So yeah. Uh, you Richard, told I'm us a wonderful for a moment. story. Lots of people tell us wonderful stories. They contradict your story. Your story contradicts their stories. And you know what? None of you have a reason to believe you. So Richard, what I'm getting at here is, okay, I have I have a mutually exclusive belief against yours. If I go and meditate and the God that reaches out to me tells me that I am explicitly not talking to Richard, all right, these two, your claim of a God and my claim of a God cannot be true at the same time. Do you have anything, any mechanism, any line of evidence, any argumentation that yours is correct and mine is not? 
You're unmuted. Let, let me explain. Let me explain something to you first about how so yes I no meditate. Question. Before you, before I, you, I, I, before you do I, that, I, I was Richard. In prison Richard, for five years. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to meet you again, Richard. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm a stickler about this. I asked you a yes or no question. Do you have any argumentation, line of evidence, any mechanism, any methodology to determine which one of us is true? Or, or is telling the truth. Do you have anything like that? Yes or no? And then you can talk a little bit about it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I didn't hear what you said because I was talking myself while you was talking. And I, I, didn't, I know, know because I, that's why I had. Me. That's why I had to mute you, Richard. So I'll, 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 let's just try. You're not going to understand. Let's try I, I, one more time, Richard. Speak to Aaron. I'm going to mute you one more. I'm the host here, and I'm going to mute you one more time. Please take a moment and listen. I asked you a yes or no question. Do you have anything, any argumentation, methodology, evidence that can show that your claims are true and mine are not? Um, no, but it's biggest besides the point that of what it's done for me and so, how it's. So, if you have no evidence, me, so Richard, and, if you have no evidence, we have nothing to me. talk about here. No. Richard, you what you what you prefer to believe, what you want to make believe, has an effect on you. It has no impact on I'm whether it's true or not. That's, that's, the best not the side, intentions that's not the side point. In the world, that is that's the all point. I've got for you, the best intentions. No, no, that's not beside the point. That is the point. There is no, I and I argue with creationists all the time, I, I, and I, I'm trying to point out, can you give me a logically valid argument that is factually accurate that supports your position? The answer Aaron, ultimately ends up the answer is always going to be yes, you, but, it's no, but it's no. Aaron, I can't defend the Bible to you about Noah took two and two on the on the ark and all that. I can't defend. Yeah, but I can I destroy know. the Bible all to I you. Know is, uh, I can prove Noah's flood never man. happened. Noah's flood never happened. I know you can, and I believe you. I believe you, but that doesn't prove there isn't a God that we don't know His name. Oh, but it doesn't matter though. What matters is that it's wonderful. That's what matters. Uh, okay. And I'll leave that with right. you if you want. But I'd love to speak with you by yourself, Aaron, just me and you. You know? Uh, Seriously. Appreciate that. Thank I, you. you know, I care about you. I really do. I care about you, man. I seriously do. I think you're a great okay. person. I'll watch you a lot. You know? I I can tell you. All right. Well, uh, thank you for the call, Richard. We're probably going to end it there. Um, so yeah, thanks for the call in. And uh, maybe give it some thought uh, because uh, quite honestly, if you can't, uh, I think by your own admission, you said, no, you can't bring any evidence or argumentation to the table. And if that's going to fly, then I can bring whatever I want to the table. I can talk about fairies or unicorns or leprechauns from the eighth dimension. You can't prove no Godzilla evidence. doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, Godzilla could be God. I mean, God is in the name. I mean, that's that's evidence right there. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if we're just going to sit here and just and just spout whatever comes to our minds with nothing to back it up, then we're really just wasting all of our time and everyone else that's watching. Um, so, give it some thought. Think of a process or methodology and and call back in and present it to us. Then we can talk about that. But thank you for the call and uh, hope you have a good. Uh, if you're over in England, what's well, morning over there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how time zones work. But anyway, thanks for the call. Yeah, I shouldn't have specified Liverpool because I, I knew he was north, and I was guessing that it was it was Birmingham. That, excuse me, that it was that it was from uh, Manchester through Liverpool. Yes, yeah. there did there, but there were tints of Brummy in there. But should have kept it a little more general. You're you're way better accents than I I am. The only accent I can really identify is Austrian because my dad is Austrian. So uh, he, okay, my dad. My dad sounds completely normal to me, but everyone I talk to says, your dad sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm like, yeah, they basically came from like neighboring villages. God bless, uh, <laughs> anyway. I'm going to hang up. Thanks right. for taking See my call. Really, Richard. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. I guess you have to double click to drop call. I'm still getting familiar with this. I thought I dropped them, but okay. Well, anyway. Yep. All right, cool. All right. Uh, we're about halfway through the show. So um, yeah, uh, get those uh, super chats in and... Uh, Keep on chatting down there, do some engagement and let us know what you think about the show, how it's going so far. Let's talk to, uh, we have two atheists and a theist on the line. Um, so we'll go to the theist first and then we'll uh, get to the atheist after that. So we have Ronnie, he, him in Mississippi. He is a theist. His statement is theism is true. So, hey, Ronnie, how you doing? 
I'm, I'm doing sorts of quite well, right? And I guess what I'm sort of interested in doing is furnishing a series of modus ponens inferences to prove that theism is correct, right? Modus ponens inferences. I'm ponus sort of in, in the uh, business, the sort of intellectual enterprise of delivering formal arguments for the views that I have, right? Okay. Can you, okay. Uh, since in the interest of time, can you like provide us maybe the best one you got um, in your list? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. So this is going to be a modal version of the Kalam cosmological argument. That's going to avoid certain pitfalls of the original argument, right? So have you, have you corrected the multiple flaws in the Kalam cosmological argument? Yeah, yeah, of course. There are flaws in the argument. That's why I'm going with the modified version. So right, you, you corrected how both of the premises are not necessarily correct, and the conclusion is a complete non sequitur? <laughs> Well, the conclusion isn't a non sequitur in the column, but I think the premises are false, of course, right? Like premise one is just sort of false given some like alternative principle, like the material principle, right? That's distinct from the causal principle. And then premise two, right? It's just false because it is logically possible for there to be actual infinites, right? It's what? So I think the argument does sort of fail. Right, but I take it that the sort of like modal version avoids the problems that I just sort of named, right? Okay. Okay. Well, maybe maybe let's 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 start slow from the beginning. So I guess when you say theism is true, you're talking about just a general God exists, not a specific God. Of a yeah, specific I'm talking religion. about the sort of like standard definition, right? That's saying that there's some being that's like omnipotent and omniscient and omnibenevolent, right? Okay, so you're talking about like classical okay. theism then? Wow. Yeah, of course. Okay, so classical theism. Uh, the Kalam cosmological argument, uh, if, if I, I'm hearing a feedback, uh, by the way, Ronnie, so you might want to get me off a speaker uh, phone or something like that. Um, so Kalam cosmological argument, even if it were uh, valid and sound, which I'm not saying it is, even if it was, that doesn't lead us to any type of God as the result. So do you have a workaround for those problems? Yeah, yeah, of course. There is a workaround in the argument. Okay. Okay. How many premises you got? Yeah. Well, the argument is going to be about 17 premises, right? Wow. Yeah. So we aren't going to be able to get through that on a call let alone keep track or probably talk intelligibly about that. Have you published a paper about it? Have you shared this in any type of written form where people can take yeah, their I mean, time and go I through it? I had a debate on this where somebody did a modified version of the Kalam cosmological argument, it had 17 premises, just like this one does. However, the conclusion, at, and, and the premises again, were not necessarily true, and still the conclusion was a non sequitur. Yeah, yeah, the more, well, more premises you, sort of you the, the more premises you cram in there, the more premises you cram in there, the greater of an opportunity we're going to have to find something wrong with it. Um, and, and I'm not saying that because you have 17 premises, it's obviously not valid or sound. I'm not saying that at all. But we aren't going to be able to talk about something like that on the show here because my brain's going to melt. We're going to lose our audience. Is there a way you can publish and share this with folks and we can like talk about it? I mean, later? yeah, you can read um, Brian Leftow's paper on it, right? And he sort of goes Who? over it. I'm sorry? It, it's fun if you don't want to cover Brian Leftow, B R I A N space L E F O W. Okay. He, he wrote the paper on what? it, but this sort of argument is too much of a, a behemoth, so to speak, to sort of cover, right? I'd be willing to sort of render a shorter yeah. argument such that this is like a whole compendium of propositions, so, right? So tell you what. Tell you what, Ronnie, um, uh, Amargan, our producer, just gave me the email address that you can send that to. It's contact at qnaline.com. Uh, if you have a copy of that in like a PDF form or something, you can attach that to an email and send it to contact at qnaline.com. And then uh, we can take a look at it and maybe address it at a future date. Fine. But, uh, but in, in the meantime, short arguments, right? Yeah. In, in, in the meantime, just as briefly as possible, can you tell me what convinced you that there's a God? I was about to ask that too, yeah. yeah I, mean, I don't want to cut you off, Ronnie, me, so give us, give us a short version. Yeah, I mean, what convinced me specifically was this argument called the Lord of Non-Contradiction that was made by uh, Anderson, right? And I took that argument you were to an atheist, and I still think it's you, you were an atheist, you, yeah, you accepted was, evolution and all of that, and then... And then somebody gave you this argument about non-contradiction, and you what you said, oh wow, holy fuck, magic is real. 
and there's a God. No, I'm actually not saying the most uh, uncharitable interpretation of what I'm saying. So what I said is that I was convinced of theism, and then to get convinced of like Christianity further, there's obviously further steps, right? So you're going to have to sort of look at like minimal facts cases. But that argument sort of convinced wrong me about everything. Theism, right? Sorry? How do you get past the Bible being wrong about everything? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I didn't really think about that. That's actually a, a very good point there. That, that, I, no, I would think that you know, what we're talking about here more. is that theism is true. Not Christianity is true. I'm interested in talking about theism minimally, right? Because presumably the atheists are denying Christianity. I thought you said that you, you, you had then gone to Christianity from there. No, I said I was drawn to theism, actually. That's just sort of like a track okay. here. Okay. Yeah. Now, am I allowed to sort Alrighty. of like render the Lord of Non Contradiction argument or. Excuse me? Sorry. Say that again. You, you were going to tell me that, you know, so at this po at some point, you, you accept that the natural world is, is all that there is. You're, there is no supernatural. There is no magic. We don't have souls, that sort of thing. And then suddenly somebody tells you about non contradiction. And then you go, wow, magic is real. We have souls and there's a God. No way, you just like sort of hide self with the same misrepresentation, right? And I, I presumably, well, I'm, I'm well, I wasn't you. actually a naturalist before. Oh, so, oh, yeah, the answer is no, I'm not saying the uncharitable interpretation. Okay, so the the, the question no. was, what convinced you? When did you start to believe there was a God? And why? Well, I already said that as well. Um, so I said I was convinced by the Lord of Non Contradiction argument, which I take to be a sound prior argument. Prior to hearing that, you did not believe there was a God. Yeah, I was convinced by the argument. You were an yeah, atheist nice prior to hearing that. Yeah, I was an atheist before the argument. Yeah. You accepted evolution. You accepted we don't have souls. There's no such thing as magic. Like and then somebody told me this was, argument. That, that's false, by the way. I was like a soul theorist before I heard the arguments. There's like secular mm -hmm. arguments for souls in literature, right? That are going to have to do with like composition. There's like myriological arguments, right? I'm at a loss. Nonetheless, yeah. like I still don't know, like, because, you know, you sort of just asked me the same question four times after I gave the same answer. I'm just wondering if I can deliver the Lord of Non Contradiction argument or not. How many premises is With that? 17 argument? premises, probably not. The premises. That's, that's Oh, the argument, the argument, yeah, the argument just has eight premises. It's just that the loss of logic imply the existence of God. That's the conclusion. Okay, well, don't, no, they don't, but let, let's hear your eight premises, if you can deliver them quickly. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure, I can deliver them, right? So, premise one is just saying that the laws of logic are going to be the sorts of propositions that are necessarily true, right? Which is to say that they're going to hold across all possible worlds, right? And that premise is just sort of going to be analytically true, right? So now, do you contend with the first premise? I don't the think so, but I don't, to I'm all also didn't worlds? hear it very well. What's the second premise? Yeah, you're, saying, you're saying that the first premise, laws of, laws of non-contradiction are going to be true. I guess. What's the next right. one? Yeah, so the next premise is saying that propositions are real entities, but that they can't be physical, right? That they're essentially well, how, how is a proposition a real entity? Yeah, the reason a proposition has to be a real entity is because these sorts of things are going to be sorts of indispensable explanatorily, right? To the relevant sort of sciences. What right? makes them an entity? Yeah, they're going to add yeah. in certain mathematical entities, right? Those are going to be explanatorily indispensable. And these mathematical the laws entities of are going to play an explanatory role. Are going to be a mathematical entity? Oh, no, no, now you're just not tracking. So I'm just telling you why we think propositions are real entities. That's what you asked for. What's now, it's an fine entity? if you know, you're a fast mongoloid and you forgot what was going on, but I just laid that out. What is the okay. entity? So hold on. I'm, I'm muting him for a moment here. So yeah, a, a, little, uh, a little more Ronnie, milk and a little less coffee. Yeah. So, Ronnie, uh, again, you're already on shaky ground. I don't agree with the, uh, premise one. And I definitely don't agree with premise two. So. I'll give you closing statements, although I my troll detector is is up towards the yellow. Um, I'm going to give you one more chance here, and then we're going to move on to other calls. It, don't insult us when we're honestly trying to engage with you, and speak a little slower. All right, so go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, I remember, remember more milk than most yeah, though, You know, yeah. the stroke detector for me is up to yellow. My stroke detector for Aaron is up to red. But um, uh, the proposition yeah, okay. Aaron? That... Who the fuck is Aaron? You just confirmed the troll. He just he just disconnected. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I my Amargan and Jimmy were like, yeah, he's probably a troll from before. And yeah, his IP address did not match up to Mississippi. So yeah, very very sus. Uh, anyway, he's yep. gone now, so let's go ahead and move on to real people who want to engage honestly. Uh, real people or have... theists? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love talking to theists as long as, uh, you know, they're genuine, and definitely Ronnie was not. How rare does that uh, happen? Oh, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, well, let's go take a look here. Uh, all right, so we have another theist uh, on the line here. We have Josh, he, him in Montana. Uh, he wants to justify the belief in God through psychological means. So let's go ahead and connect Josh. Hey, Josh, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? Yeah, doing pretty good. What do you got for us? Okay, well, um, so uh, this, this might be a little bit of a challenge, but it should be fairly clear. Um, so the first thing to talk about is um, like an an epistemic issue, which is like a lot of people in their everyday lives think that they can see outside themselves, right? Like their experience is outside them, right? Wouldn't you say that's generally true? Their experience is outside them. Do um, you mean that the experience yeah, that like they're that they're that they're experiencing is the result of outside stimuli? Uh, yeah, but also that the experience that they're experiencing is separate from them. So I, I'm so, using right? a camera to look behind me. Well, that's fine. Um, yeah, that count. I have no less. Like your your eyes are attached to your brain, and the light goes one way, right? The light goes only in, and then there is a set of transducing stimuli that go into our brain and register what is really our experience of the outside world. Okay. Okay. So when we accept this, we get to a point where it is actually the case that there is no separation between the self and your experience of the outside world. There's even no separation with, between even the with self devices and my experience of the outside can, world. Even with devices that can perceive things I cannot perceive. Yeah, even then, because like take hearing, for example, there's a limited range within your hearing. You could have a device that could measure past the 20 kilohertz range of your hearing, and that device would show you by visual means that experience, but you're not actually having it because you can't I, I hear have devices. that. Experience. We, we, I can have devices that see a spectrum of color that I can't see, invisible color, gamma rays, for uh, example. No, no, they can detect it. Yeah. They can, no, they can detect it and put it within representationally your field of vision. But that okay. would change your field So even of beyond my senses, I still have these devices that can go beyond what I can perceive. Uh, no, they can represent other things within the visual field, but they can't extend the visual field, or they can't extend the well, limits I'm, of I'm your not, hearing. I'm not myself able to see gamma rays, but I can right. see them depicted by a device that can show me gamma rays. I admit that, but let's, let's okay. stick And radiation, I have being. no way to detect that, but I've got another device that will read when there's so many rads in my area, right? Exactly. Yeah, germs. We can okay. see germs too. We can't see microbial germs, but yet we know they're okay. there because our imaginations allow us to see them through other means. Our right? imaginations allow us to see them. Well, well, our, our, like if we, I didn't we, know if germs we're using were imaginary. A microscope, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If we're using a microscope, okay, what's happening there is that it is magnifying the visual range. Right, but it's not. It's not extending. Like your eyes are not changing. The now, there's also I, I can put down a material on my desk and shine a light, a black light on it, and I can see bacteria that way. I can see fingerprints that way. Sure. So but again, again like what there's devices can, and technology that get outside is, of my. What What is your point? Go ahead, get to your point. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. The, what's the what's the point is point that here. even when you're even when you're viewing something with your black light, the light goes in one way. You need the light to be transduced by your eyeballs and into your neurons and into your brain. And that experience of the black light or of the microscope is nonetheless happening inside your living brain. And okay. Therefore, all experiences a lie. What? All experiences are a lie? Yeah, all experiences all are right. a lie. Is this an argument, argument for solipsism? Medium. It, it, so, 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 so the, the, fact, on, that on, know, the fact that we Josh, know things this... and can confirm those things with other devices and other means means that the things that we can prove to be true are lies and only oh, no, the no, lie no, is no, truth? No, 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 excuse me. No, no, no. It is that it is literally this. The outside world may exist. We simply don't have direct contact may? with it. What we do have is transduced stimuli that are registered. Do we not have objective verification for how this outside world exists? Uh, no, you do at times, but that but at times. it's very important to realize that all 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 of that verification depended on a living brain first. And, it, and not, not just one, because any, any one of us might be delusional, but there are ways to check. Does my reality match the reality of these 50 other people? Do Nobody uh, else? Do these pink story? elephants? Yeah. Just me? I don't, I, I, don't, I don't track you by what you're saying is your reality. What do you mean? We live in a shared objective reality. You and I are both having a conversation right now via technology. I could not possibly hear you where you are, but we have technology that can compensate for that. And your reality in this in this context must match mine in order for us to communicate and have this conversation. So you're proposing that your proof of God is that either I'm imagining you or you're imagining me. Uh, no, it's not that. Excuse me. It is that experience depends on living tissues, okay? Even if our phones are able to deliver these messages, we still need conscious. Not only that, we just need to be we need conscious brains. That, that not only do they have to be alive, they have to be awake, right? They have to be. So they don't actually have to, to be attend. alive because we can have automated devices that can perceive things, and 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 based on certain sensory apparatus, we can have them respond also accordingly. And so that I mean, that's that not a be, that It doesn't their, have to be that alive. Be their reality of that that. I mean, I wouldn't have any. I wouldn't have any real. Means okay, so of, of I can objective. I, I can ver alive. I can experience things. Automated devices can experience things. Other living beings can experience things. We can all experience the same thing and confirm that all of these things think, that we're all experiencing the same reality. You and I are having a conversation via technology that would well, that otherwise have been impossible. So we are verifying yeah. each other's reality with the observation of all these people in the chat and my co-host and everybody else. So. None of your premises are true. Where do you no, get to the conclusion of the right? You're alive. You're alive, right? You wouldn't and, and, it, and I don't have to were. be because I could be an automated device that would still be able to perceive things outside of any particular consciousness. So where do we get to magic invisible man? Okay, where we get there is that your the 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 all of sense perception is input there's no output there's no laser beam vision that gives you direct contact with the outside world the outside world is mostly illusory and you see me imagination spending this cup uh, defying no, I'm gravity not I am. Right now. i'm on a phone i'm on okay. a phone so i'm not looking online yeah you learn a lot more with a computer but the, the point I'm, I'm is, yeah. garden, you're saying we can't nice interact green. with the outside world. I'm interacting unless, with unless the we're outside alive. world. Unless we're alive. We can't interact and I don't have to be alive, alive because I have devices right. in my house that also interact with an outside Josh, world. Josh, I'm going to give you two sentences. How does this link us to a God exists? I've asked him that question three oh, times. It's that, it's that, yeah. it's, it's that two all, sentences. because all of our experience because all of our experience depends on our waking living consciousness, it which is it that doesn't. waking living consciousness which is God. 
Okay, so so, so your premises are false and your conclusion gone. is false. That was thank you for playing. You get right. you get you know so a this, year's this, worth of rice aroni. Thank you. Next caller. This, yeah, this is just an arbitrary assignment of our sense perception and our idea yeah. of reality. Therefore, all of which magic. are based. Yeah, therefore we we can attach wherever we want to because of unknowns around it. So, Josh, in summary, my, some of my presuppositions are that an objective reality exists. And my senses are what I use to interact and learn about that reality. I could be wrong about those things, but I think that that is the case because all my experiences demonstrate that to me. I cannot prove to anyone that I am not a brain in a jar. I can't even prove that to myself. But these are questions like heart solipsism that we don't have answers to currently. And we may never, may never do. That doesn't mean we can just take these things and run away with them and attach whatever we want to them. Terms like God or no, even multiverses I, I, I or other things. I agree with that. What I'm okay. saying is that there is a, so, there's a cultural interpretation that, that leads one to say, oh, because, because it seems so natural for me to believe that my experience is outside of me, right, then I don't have to entertain the other possibility, which is that because experience is attached to me, my living organism, that that, that experience also has life-like quality okay so there was no personal there's quality. no requirement that you be alive to have these experiences and you said that you did the, the experience only goes one way that it's that, that you're all getting input yeah. there's no output you're not you're not able to send information out right. which you're having a two-way conversation with me so that's false too mm -hmm. And so the fact no, that you're no, wrong in the first because, premise, because the fact the that you're wrong in the second premise, and then you say, therefore, magic invisible man. No, I, I'm sorry. You're, you're incorrect about the neuroscience of the second, uh, like, rejection. Neuroscience. So the reason why. Where was no, neuroscience no involved output. in this? The, it, okay, so all sense perceptions are afferent systems. Okay? My tongue and my ability to vocalize, those are efferent systems. <laughs> They're different. So, Josh, Josh, our, our brains work on sensory input through our organs, basically. Okay, so it's not right. it's not That's the right. five senses. It's it's all converted eventually into electrical sensory input into our brain, and our brain also Got puts it. out signals that your brain then interprets. Yep. Okay, so here here's my question about this. Then, so we could get even mm -hmm. further down in the weeds, which we aren't. But if you're wrong about this idea that our senses all come together and somehow this becomes God, if you're wrong about that, how would you know? Oh, you would know um, because how? there would be adverse. You would know because there'd be adverse effects from the. I'm experiencing some adverse effects held. right now, and so are you. You're just uh, not okay, aware I mean, of them because your consciousness Josh, is defective. Josh, your your explanation I mean, of falsification I, I there is uns. All right, I'm muting you for a moment. Josh, your falsification criteria there is not falsification criteria. Do you have something better? If you were wrong about this, just pretend for a moment you're wrong about this. How could you tell that to yourself? Okay, am I still on? You're still on, please answer my question. Okay, the way that you tell are things like um, the lesioning of brain regions by going and talking to a um anesthetist about how consciousness is affected by anesthetic medicine you would know them by realizing that because your eyes close your experience of your immediate surroundings begins to suffer right these are all things that have to do with the anatomical way in which experience is Josh. born of a living system. Josh. Hey, Josh. Repeat my question back to me, what I asked you. You were saying, if I was wrong, how would I know? Okay. Yeah. If you were wrong about okay, consciousness, so then, being, hold on, hold yeah. on. If, if you're I wrong about, it, if, yeah. I'm muting you again. You, you didn't give me my complete question back. If you are wrong about consciousness and senses all coming together to demonstrate a God, how would you know? So, so in your falsification, your second attempt at that, you gave me nothing talking about a God. You were just talking about going to an, uh, anesthetians and, 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 and brain doctors and talking to them about how the brain shuts down under certain conditions like anesthesia. Like, How does that at all lead to the God thing? I asked you specifically 
about falsifying the God claim about this. One more try. Okay, so so it's impossible for me to do because I'm alive. Like basically, my my argument. So you have to be it's dead. Impossible for you to do because you're alive. All right, so Josh, we're gonna we're gonna end it there because I I don't think you understand how you would falsify your own proposition here, and your if statement basically there just implied the that you need to be bong, dead in order to to falsify yeah. this. If I was toking off the same bong as that guy, I still don't think he would make any sense. Uh, anyway, all right, Josh, thank you for trying. Call back again one day. Preferably when I'm not here. No, I'm kidding. Just joking. I want to be nice about this. Thank you, Josh, for for calling in. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and uh, I don't know. Uh, let's take a little little breather. Um, all right, I know yeah, I asked you at the beginning of the I'm show. What you I got want to going. have a conversation with his methamphetamine ideologist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I I mean, obviously, like 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 the sense of self and consciousness and reality and the way we process things. Yeah, it's it's big and complex and scary and mysterious and it's an amazing thing to explore. But that doesn't give us license to just attach whatever we want to it because of some emotional need or because we want to be a troll or because we want to just, I don't know, confound people we want to talk to and things like that. Like you, you need you need evidence to support these claims. And you also need to know how you're wrong about it, because you're not if you don't know how you're wrong about it, then you can't really know that you're right. And do you do you not know, see like, the fundamental problem with literally every believer that ever calls into this or any show like it? <laughs> they don't care what the truth is. They're not trying no. to understand anything. They want to make believe. They're either incapable of understanding things or they flat out don't want to. They're not on a they're no. not on a serious quest. They're, they're trying to come up with any excuse will get them to the conclusion they want. You said that they, they want to confound us, right? That seems to be his goal. His criteria Maybe he's not so confused if he can confuse other people. If his nonsense is so full of bullshittery that it causes other people to be befuddled, then he's then maybe he's not as stupid as he fears that he is. Occasionally, I, I wonder if people uh, trick themselves into thinking that if I can just simply uh, find an interlocutor, overwhelm them with contradictory statements or just you know gobbledygook, and then they shut down and they walk away, and then that validates. Uh, uh, their 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 point or their their argument. It um, is the old saying. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if that's what the mentality that some folks are bullshit. under. I apologize. Yeah. I was talking. If you can't. Over you, uh, what was it? Uh, what's the court analogy? If you can't win, no, no, no worries. I think we were lagging up a little bit there. Um, yeah, what's that one court analogy or or the court? Um, uh, what was it? A lawyer basically said that uh, uh, if you have the facts, hammer the facts. And if you have arguments, hammer the arguments. And if you don't have any of that, hammer the table or just like pound the table, like just make noise, frustrate. Um, yeah. So I don't Anywho, understand what the fascination that statement, with, I'm sure. I don't, what is the fascination with believing in God anyway? The, the, the big thing that I get from people is that they want purpose, which is something I just never needed. It doesn't even make sense to me. You know, when people say, why is, what is the meaning of it? Why would, why would life need a meaning? Well, why are we here? Uh, because I think, we're uh, an instrumental emergent property of chemistry? There's, yeah. there's no I, I think why. Just people, people have various levels of, and I'm not trying to be disparaging here, but people have certain levels of neediness. I mean, some people need to have lots of friends. Some people need to have comfort and assurance in life. Some people need to have security more than others. Uh, I have my needs, uh, but a need for a God, a need for eternal comfort and eternal life is not one of them. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's a, I think I mentioned that at the beginning of the show, just that that need for hope, meaning, and purpose. That's a really, really hard hurdle for some folks to overcome. And then there's other folks who just have a need to annoy others. And I think we've dealt with a couple of those. need tonight. to annoy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think as as people get older, hopefully they grow out of it for the most part. I'm 42. I I, I don't think I had the need to annoy anybody for quite a long time now. Uh, okay, we have two callers remaining in the queue, so let's get to them. Um, who's been waiting the longest? Uh, we have Ace in Iceland, who is an atheist. You've been holding for 90 minutes, so thank you so much for holding on for that long. Uh, he wants to talk about magical thinking and how to counter it. 
Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so, uh, magical. Yeah, we hear you. Welcome. Uh, so, magical thinking and how to counter it. Is there anything specific you want us to address about that, or just go into generalities? Uh, go ahead and direct the conversation here, since it's your your topic. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So, I have like this habit of, um, I guess, sort of taking my intuitions at face value um, and I realize like right after that, oh, that's not, you know, that's not really in a step with reality. So like uh, if I have a coincidence happen to me and I start to think, oh, okay, yeah, something, uh, this means something, right? Um, and then, like right afterwards, I think, oh no, it doesn't really mean a thing. Like the probability of something happening uh, that sort of makes sense, uh, like it's it's not impossible. So it happening like doesn't really have to mean anything. But I still I always have that first uh, the first sort of intuitive like up oh, yeah this um so from kind of what i gathered in there you said that you notice patterns and coincidences in the world and that can sometimes get you thinking into like okay what if something was behind this what if something directed this maybe possibly a god or some entity is that an accurate recap we just mentioned towards us yes okay um so I heard, so I, I agree, we have amazing coincidence occurring in the world today, but I think anybody who uh, has an understanding of statistics knows that these these occurrences, these coincidence, coincidences will happen. We have 8 billion people on the planet, you know, billions more interactions and uh, experiences with the world. Humans are naturally pattern seekers. You know, we want to understand the world around us because it helps us better survive and that urge and our that need in our brain can sometimes go a little bit too far and see things that aren't actually there um i heard, I a, I heard a statistician the if the universe sure. was created if the universe was created by god and and you know, everything he does is intentional god would not be able to avoid certain coincidences there would be cr created coincidences he 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 can't avoid Something so it's not that you can't you can't say that there's no such thing as coincidence in every concept of creation something would be coincidental with something else. That's inevitable. I heard a I heard a statistician once say that um, imagine two worlds imagine our world that we have where these coincidences occur and imagine another world where no coincidence like that ever occur among the billions and billions of interactions and people and experiences in the world imagine a world where coincidences like Ace what you're taught thinking about like ones I've experienced and ones I'm sure Arn's experienced, imagine a world where that never happens. Which one is the more peculiar world? The one that statistically shows that coincidence will eventually occur, the one we live in, or this hypothetical world where coincidences never occur? Like, which one would raise the eyebrow more, do you think? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. The fact that we have coincidences just simply shows that we have mathematics and statistics and we we know things will eventually line up. Uh, just for, for example, here's here's a coincidence the other day that I wouldn't say freaked out me and my wife, but we had kind of a chuckle over it. Um, uh, I, I've i been with my wife for 15 years now and she has a thing where when she uh, is uh, wants some company, she'll send me like a text message and it'll be uh, it'll be Eric Carmen's All By Myself. It'll be a link to that YouTube song, All By Myself. And that's her gentle way of saying, I'm a lonely, come hang out with me. I'm like, okay, that's great. She hasn't sent me that in probably three or four or five years just because, you know, we, we live together and there's less of a need for her to reach out and say, you know, hey, come hang out with me. Just a last month, I was lonely. And I said, you know what? We haven't done this little game in a little while. So I sent her Eric Carmen's All By Myself. And then guess what happened the very next day? Eric Carmen died. So we 
we were like, whoa, that was really weird. Like we haven't done this in a long time. And all of a sudden I invoked Eric Carmen to say, hey, come hang out with me. And the very next day Eric Carmen dies. Um, like that stuff just simply happens. That doesn't mean that I somehow cause Eric Carmen to die. Um, correlation does equal causation. It, it's just a coincidence. Things just line up and our brains pick up on these things and our brains notice these patterns. And it's fun to you know have a laugh at them. Obviously, you know, Eric Carmen dying is not funny, but um, just the coincidence itself it was a neat thing to experience and and you're just going to experience stuff like that you're just going to see things like that and like i said just think about a world where that never happens how much more weird that would be than the one we live in right now yeah okay um is it okay if i maybe uh take what if from, there were two uh, worlds articles, um... where no coincidences ever happen now that would be a coincidence, I think. <laughs> that would be a coincidence in itself, yeah. <laughs> Two of them. Yeah. Uh, so you're about to ask, uh, Ace, uh, you, you're, you're, not, you're not asking if you can do something or you want to present us an anecdote or something? Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's just, um, I guess, the coincidence part of, uh, of the whole magical thinking. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. like the only a thing that I experience um, that I would classify as sort of magical thinking. Um, okay. But yep. it's like... Yeah, something else? Yeah. So not just coincidence, but also like um, attributing uh, motives to people and attributing like uh, sort of, you know, like something about uh, like if I find out like this person doesn't really have uh, dreams when we, when they sleep, then I go ah, that's why they're like pretty unimaginative in their like daily life. So <laughs> uh, does that okay. make sense? Uh, kinda. Um, you you you, you mentioned other people and their motives, right? And yeah. how, I don't know, like how, how is this magical thinking using your terminology? Oh, well, uh, just because I assume that I can like, tell why people are the way they are and why people uh, do Oh, I see, they so, do. You, so, so you, you interact with people and then you, you, Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, you believe you can assume their motives accurately in most cases? Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. Uh, let's say let's say for a moment that you... Let, let's say for a moment, I mean, let, let's just say there's a possibility that, yeah, you somehow are, are like telepathically linked to them or you have some type of magical ability that allows you to do this. We'll put that on the table as a possibility, but for a moment, let's pretend that's false. That's that's not actually the case. Uh, what other explanations can you come up with for for why you're able to do this occasionally, or even most of the time? Um, yeah, I I don't have confirmation that I can do this. I just assume okay. that uh, my intuitions are right. So right, uh, but I still have the intuitions, uh, even though I'm yeah. like cognizant of Good. the fact that. It may not be in, uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have intuitions like that too. I'm, I'm a human. I've interacted with countless humans in my life. I think most of us humans are generally wired the same up in our brains. I mean, you're going to have like outliers and aberrations and such, but, uh, I think for the most part, most of us are generally the same. So we can pick up on body language. We can pick up on, uh, a certain uh, 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 words that are used, certain speaking styles. We can pick up on all kinds of, of of cues that inform us about people's intent or what people are actually thinking, uh, or or maybe they're being deceptive or hiding something, or perhaps being genuine. Uh, that's probably one of my weaknesses is when I'm on the line like this. Uh, I, I have a hard time identifying trolls because I can't see people for the most part. I can only go off of their words. Um, so, I mean, there's there's natural ex explanations for these types of phenomenon that we have in our interactions with others. I have no reason to think that I have some type of, you know, quote unquote, magical ability 
that allows me to do this. This might just be me learning the behaviors of other humans because I'm a human myself and I understand them at some level. That's what, that's what I was getting at earlier okay. with, okay, what if, what if the magical explanation was false? What other explanations would there be? And if I was asked that question, that's the answer I would give. Yeah. That's a beautiful lizard, uh, Aaron. It's got blue eyes. That's awesome. Thank you kindly. It was one of our leopard geckos. So last so Monday, we had this, this interesting coincidence that God could not have stopped. It was, you know, there was a coincidence in that the, the motion of the moon around the around the Earth, and and the the, the position that, that I happen to be in, despite you know living in many other places, I currently live in Dallas, which just happened coincidentally to be on the track for where the moon was precisely in front of the sun, from my perspective, from where I am, to, to create this eclipse thing. Who who could have who could have prevented that, right? Anyway, all right. So, uh, so Ace, I hope hopefully we we sufficiently answered your your or responded to your statements there. Um, is there anything you want to close with before we uh, let you go? Uh. <laughs> uh, I guess not. Okay. But uh, you guys have a good night for the uh, rest of your day. Likewise. Uh, Hope you have a good day. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. So, Aaron, what is that, what is that uh, gecko's name? Does it have a name? I don't know. What my, That's my wife's gecko. I don't know what she calls it. Hmm. Now, are uh, geckos right. lizards? Are they, are they part yeah. of a lizard? Okay. I got you. I, uh, I owned a gecko once when I was very young. Um, I think my dad left it out in the sun for too long and that's how I lost it. I think I was probably like six years old. My dad was uh, very upset about, about that. He, uh, I remember him profusely apologizing to me for killing my gecko. This was in Las Vegas too. So it was quite, quite hot there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, we have one caller left and, uh, then we can start going into uh, closing unless, um, we get more callers to come in and, and want to talk to us, uh, look down in the description, the phone number and the link is down there and we will start talking to Mohammed. He, him, uh, in Algeria, he's an atheist. And his question is, what is faith? Hey, Mohammed. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? All right. Yes. Yeah, you're pretty good. So your question well, is, what is faith? Do you want to elaborate is, on that? Yeah, because like I've gotten with many atheists into this, and uh, on this show, like you, you really hate faith. I understand that, right? Like you say that faith is one of the worst things people can have, and I kind of understand that. I just don't understand like where you draw the line of what faith is so for example like you repeatedly say you just said uh two calls ago that like you the only thing you know for sure is that you exist and uh refuting or confirming heart solipsism for example is impossible uh or like it's not attainable at the moment but like in order to live ordinary functional lives you like you have to assume that the world around you exists in an objective way right and i mean the way i define faith right like you can't prove that that like the world as we perceive it exists you can't prove to anyone that you're not uh, a brain in a jar in your own words so because you live a functional life uh you take that up on faith anyway, right? Like you assume no. that anyway, without no. having any way to prove it. No. Yeah. So just to, faith just is to a, kind of clarify faith a couple. Faith is a secure conviction that is not based on evidence. Faith is when yeah. something is not evidently true and you're determined to believe in it anyway. And uh, just to clarify a couple but things. Like, uh, first off, you know, um, I'm... Uh, yeah. So first off, Mohammed, uh, we're getting a little, lot of clipping from the microphone. If you can maybe pull the microphone away from your mouth just a little bit, just so it doesn't static us as much. 
Um, but just to just kind of clarify a couple of things, um, I don't I don't hold to these presuppositions with 100% confidence that you know reality exists. We experience reality with our senses. Um, we're all experiencing the same objective reality. I I am, I am highly 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 confident in those things, but I'm not absolutely sure of those. I don't hold those with faith. I I, I put I pick up those presuppositions because of previous experience, but I'm always open to them being wrong. I highly doubt that'll ever happen, but it's possible. Um, yeah. And when it comes to the whole the whole thing on solipsism and brain in a jar uh, type stuff, is that even if those let's say we lived in a world let's say I was a brain in a jar in fact everything I'm interacting with right now you are in the audience everything my chair it is all just a product of a simulation being fed into my brain I have no reliable way of determining whether that's true or false because anything that I investigate or any evidence that I look at could be part of that simulation and, and constantly fooling me. I can't eliminate that as a possibility, but functionally, I have to go the route of this is not true because I have nothing to support that uh, yeah. a, a line of thinking. I, I have functionally, pragmatically, I have to work off of certain assumptions in order to operate properly in the world. That doesn't mean I hold to these with 100% conviction or 100% confidence. Uh, it, 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 it's a pragmatic exchange of, okay, I can't answer these questions, so I have to ignore them. Well, anyway, well David Hume said so that we are forced. That. David Hume says mm -hmm. we're forced into a situation where we have to make the same assumption that a baby would or that a beast would, that there is an objective reality and that our senses provide some accurate information about it. That doesn't mean, as 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 you was pointing out, that doesn't mean 100% on anything. We don't have to claim absolute certainty. But again, as he was pointing out, pragmatically, there's no... There's no sense in pretending that reality isn't real. As, as Hume put it, it would be, but he, he phrased it differently, but it, it would be literally madness to try to go about life as if there's not a material universe and that your senses don't provide accurate information about it. Literal madness. We have to, there's no choice. We have to assume there is a universe and that we're interacting in it. Okay, and, uh, so what and I'm we're... understanding is you're saying the difference is faith is um, is claiming certainty, whether you like faith is a secure uh, conviction that it's not based on whatever, evidence. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So the way Arndt yeah. just put it and is really like... is really accurate. Uh, faith, faith is faith is is conviction in an assertion that you have no evidence for. Uh, Matt uh, Dillhoney he puts it that you know faith is uh, the excuse people give when they don't have evidence. Um, and and that's really what it comes down to when it comes yeah. to like religious faith, because there's different senses of faith. Like, you know, I, religious faith and I have faith in my wife, I think are two completely different concepts, two completely different yep. uses of the word faith. They just happen to use the same uh, 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 utterances, the, 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 the same, you know, uh, a spoken word for two different concepts. Um, and I'm I'm in line with both Matt and Arn on that, is that faith is 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 a reason somebody gives Matt says this is an excuse that I have faith or I believe this claim, I believe this proposition, but I have no way to show it to either myself or you. I just simply believe. And I think that's a very poor way to come to accurate understanding of our reality. It's a very poor way of determining what's actually true or false. So I generally reject faith as any type of reliable mechanism to do those things. Mm -hmm. And like, what if someone like is subscribing to religion, like without claiming certainty, but like he just assumes it's true because it's convenient, just as assuming that hard solipsism is false is convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, they they adopt the claims or they believe the claims are true because of faith and it's convenient. Um, in that case, that I would probably convenient. approach it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I was talking about hope, meaning, and purpose earlier. Like, it's convenient to have those those comforting emotions uh, held on, or you know, uh, uh, der derived from certain beliefs. Well, but as long in as that the case, belief Muhammad, as long as the belief doesn't contradict your perception of reality, that that I don't I don't see yeah. where convenience is an issue. Yeah. But uh, Muhammad, I would eventually, I would probably, okay. with, with an individual like that, I would probably go down the street epistemologist route and I would probably say, okay, let's start from a base case. 
You know, um, you believe that this is true because it gives you some type of utility, some type of, of beneficial function in your reality. Um, I would ask that, okay, can we talk about other religious beliefs held by other people that do the same thing? Why don't you believe those? Why do you not think that, or why do your do or do you not think that that is a good reason for that person to hold those beliefs? And then how is it any different from the belief that you're trying to hold based on faith? Um, so I would eventually just do a, like an outsider test of faith and just kind of pit these two propositions against each other. And hopefully the person yeah, I'm talking like to when, comes to realize that it's, it's a bad way. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, but when that happens, like the, the road we got, we go down is everyone is um, like, entitled to uh assume whatever they want to assume about the spiritual world as long as they like they don't hurt me or whatever right like hindus are are sure. uh, perfectly fine believing in krishna uh just as i am perfectly fine believing in allah or whatever sure i i i tend to rate so that like religious that's beliefs where that I, goes I, to. I tend to rate religious beliefs on like a scale of harm and of course, I'm going to be I'm going to be more comfortable, more accepting, for lack of a better term, less less adversarial against religious beliefs that have minimal to no harm. Uh, it, there could be argumentation that 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 there is no religious belief that at least doesn't harm somebody in some way. Because I mean, I could argue that let's take the let's take the most benign, uh, quote unquote, innocent religious belief that a person can hold, and the person's not hurting anybody. The person's not like voting in any certain way that harms other people in accordance with these beliefs. I could argue that well. You're exercising two different epistemologies. You are using bad reasoning over here. That puts you at risk of using this bad reasoning somewhere else and then negatively affecting your own life or maybe the lives of others. So it could be argued that every religious belief has some downside to it. Um, but I, but yeah, obviously, you know, if, if, if I see a high harm religious belief, I'm going to be much more confident. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack that much harder than one that, you know, doesn't harm other people around you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I mean, like, I, and like, if you would allow me to, to, so if you'd allow me to like tack on another like tangential question to that, because I run sure. into that a lot too. Um, like, if you take math, math is an axiomatic system of beliefs, right? That is built on axioms, which means that you like you have to buy into it. Like, for example, to uh, to go into any sort of uh, Euclidean mathematics, you have to assume things that are unprovable, namely that like every two points have a line between them and all the other five, right? Uh, all the other four. So, like by your own definition, um, because these axioms are, well, by definition, not falsifiable, and like they only have their own system that they affect and like uh build proofs upon they're useless in the real world right because it says mm. says nothing about like real evidence or like it has real no real evidence to it it's just something like it's a game that we play that we buy into and then we I, build, I actually, off, build off of that uh axiom yeah i actually have two i actually have two contentions i'll bring up there about what you just said one is um our axioms and even our presuppositions uh are, are falsifiable like uh, uh there's always a line between two points all you got to do is demonstrate to us two points that don't have a line in between them uh for my for my uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh presuppositions whether it comes like the laws of logic or such like uh a a is a like the law of identity all you got to show me is a case where a is also not a at the same time like it, I, we can't imagine how that would appear to us, but that is technically falsification criteria. Um, and I would also say that we don't accept these without evidence. Sure, they're starting assumptions, but we do have evidence for them because these starting assumptions are shown to be true in, in at least some cases. Like for instance, you know, here's my cell phone. My cell phone is my cell phone. My cell phone is not my computer chair. I, I have evidence to show that the law of identity and the uh, law of non-contradiction -contra are are indeed true in the case of my cell phone so i have some evidence that that's true now does that is that evidence that it is true in all cases no and i don't think you, you can ever show that we can never fully uh uh confirm or argue for our presuppositions because if we get to a point where we can do that they're no longer a presupposition they're now a downstream you know uh, argument based on presuppositions we already hold so i i'm, I, I'm taking a little bit of issue with the way you're looking at that there uh but for the most part, yeah, we, we, we hold on to these things without absolute evidence, without absolute proof that these things are true. I don't equate that to faith at all. 
we have falsification criteria and we also have evidence for for these things to be to to, leave, to hold up in at least some cases if, if you falsify one of the axioms which like did happen with euclidean uh, geometry you just like get another uh, branch of mathematics like Euclidean geometry, for example, I'm just giving an example here, like depends on um, right angles uh, or like parallel lines uh, not meeting, right? And so like you define the, the field of study by the axioms, not the other way around. So you can never uh, show the axiom to be, uh, to be untrue, right? Because then you would go to a, to a whole other um, field of study. Like you were defining the rules of the game before you play, uh, and then like you're proving uh, off of stuff that you've already like set for yourself. And I don't know, like that seems a little a little circular. I I don't know what I'm getting wrong here. Well, I wouldn't call them circular because we're not we're not out to prove that you know uh, uh, parallel lines are indeed always true because using that as an axiom that itself will become circular. There, there are assumptions. Those assumptions can be falsified, and in which case we need to re-examine that, that field of study. Um, but yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't really see much of an issue there because that's just the reality we all have to deal with. We have to deal with the base assumptions that we have to assume in order to get up and operational. It's like I said, it's, it's a pragmatic transaction. So I don't see much of an issue there. I don't call it faith. And if... The way I look at it is, and like I said, there's not evidence that this is necessarily true, 100%, but it, it works. It, functionally, mathematics work. Like the mathematics going into just you and I talking right now over the internet yeah. is astounding. Um, the, the proof is in the pudding, you know, yeah. uh, for lack of a better term. Parallel lines, you know, can yeah. sometimes, so parallel lines can sometimes meet, but only on a full moon during the yeah. month with an yeah. R. <laughs> well, I mean, they they do meet on a full moon, but <laughs> not, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, um, so like you're you're saying in, in the end of this that the answer to all of this is pragmatism, uh, and like at not but like to be like going with them as long as they're uh useful and uh and pragmatic yeah. well i mean i think i think any presumption yeah i mean generally um i'm sure some people would take exception to that but yeah i mean when you're dealing with the bedrock of philosophy and the bedrock of our reality where we can no longer ask any why questions or get answers yeah assumptions and pragmatism have to come into effect there because we have to start from somewhere to get going um and in that case, it really comes down to, like I said, uh, what mm -hmm. what is the result of the assumptions and the systems we build off of them? And frankly, I'm quite impressed with what we got now. Uh, what we got now may not be 100% accurate, but it works pretty damn yeah. well. And if it, if any of those assumptions are ever falsified, then that'd be really exciting because then we'd have to first ask ourselves, okay, why, why was our initial assumption false? How did we get so far based on that? And also, what new thing, what new exciting thing is going to take its place and further advance our more accurate understanding of the world? Yeah. Um, and I think that's just uh, that's just the benefit of yeah, science. Yeah, a great in example science. of that. I find. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think, it, and, that, and that's a, why a I love science so much. Is, uh, is I find like Newtonian. I'm sorry. There's a, there's a lag. I'm sorry. It's it's fine. I understand. Go ahead. I'll let you. I'll let you talk. Go ahead. Um, yeah, what I was saying is a great example of that is like, uh, the model of Newtonian, uh, physics and mechanics is not completely 100% right. Like we, uh, we got some stuff wrong there, but it yeah. got us most of the way there. And then when, when we found out like, Hey, there are, there are things that like they don't account for, uh, they're like, but we got this far, so we might as well keep using it. And we're still taught Newtonian mechanics in school, which is astounding. And we can't bring up non-Euclidean geometry because we've already made too many HP Lovecraft references today. <laughs> cool, yeah. <clears throat> 
So, All right, yeah. did I lose my co-host Thanks. again? Uh, it was cool talking to you. Yeah, it looks like I lost my co-host again. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to see if I can open up the uh, open up the line so I can take over just in case uh, my co-host doesn't come straight back. Great. What's that? Cool. You're back. Uh, I said cool. Okay. Um, oh. All right. Thank you for calling in. Okay. Bye. Right, so I'm going to take take a look, see if what other callers we might have. I don't have anybody on the line, so that would be it. And, uh, yep, lines are closed. Okay. All right, then, I will close that. And can you I – don't, I don't know what happened to my call host, but, but can you put up the, the Super Chats we need to read? All right, what were we supposed to do then? Okay. Okay. Are you able to run that? Because I have another show in a half hour myself. All right, everybody, that's what we're doing. So stay tuned for this promotional video. Yay! <laughs> I can't wait for Jimmy to get on my case about this. Um, I got some work to do this weekend with my computer, or next weekend, rather. Uh, give me one second here. Uh, Muhammad, are you still there? No, he's gone. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to get my All right. So we're going to do the promotional here. video, and if you want to announce that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so... Thank you so much, everybody, for watching today. And my computer's still a mess here. Get my notes back up here. Come on. I love it. Okay, great. So, yeah, uh, we're going to have some promotional uh, footage here for uh, the new uh, uh, podcast that uh, we have here set up at the line. Uh, so before we go, Aaron, you have any closing thoughts? Anything you want to uh, close off with? And once we're done with yeah, that, I, we'll I get it. Whenever we have these callers... When we get calls from theists and we're trying to reason with them, I'm always mystified. Most of the time, they turn out to be trolls. It's the weird thing. They are completely insincere almost every call when they want to defend theism. There's never inquiry. There's not questions trying to make sure they're right. You're asking, well, if you were wrong about this, how would you know? They don't care. Have you noticed that trend? It's like the old saying, that, you know, if, yes. if, if loving God is wrong, I don't want to be right. That's that's where they're at. And that's that's what I have a real problem with, is the, is the insincerity, the dishonesty of theism, of a religious belief in general. I think, if it's uh, wrong, I think, they don't want to find out. They, sometimes they know it's wrong and believe it anyway, because a few people have admitted that to me. Yeah. I, uh, I get... I get hung up on just the kind of the emotional aspect behind it. Like, obviously, we're 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 emotional creatures. We're humans. We we have wants and needs and desires. But the problem is when we allow those things to interfere with our assessment of what reality really is. Um, it's it's difficult for me to really uh, kind of get past that because reality doesn't care about how you feel about it. Um, having false conclusions about the world puts us at risk of, of lowered survival or even outright death. Because if I assume like, for instance, uh, let's take Steve jobs for a moment. Steve jobs had a very treatable form of cancer that was detected early on in life or early on in the cancer cancer's life. He opted to go with some type of naturalistic non established therapy for it. And it ended up killing him. And that type yeah. of mentality there, the, the, the mentality of I'm going to go with this because I used a bad epistemology or I am going against the evidence. 
or my viewfinder is inactive because I can't activate my camera software. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it, 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 it pollutes your epistemology, it pollutes your thinking and it puts you at risk. And I understand people need to feel less insecure. People want to see their loved ones again. People want to know that they are loved and valued, but those wants don't at all help us at all, uh, don't at all help us with getting to the actual facts about reality, whether or not there is actually a God that wants these things for us. We need to show that via other means, and that's with proper epistemology, proper evidence, proper argumentation. Um, and yeah, when what you see the, somebody just completely throw that out the window, it's it can be very frustrating. When, when one of the earlier calls uh, said that there was no such thing as a self, well, that's what that's what religion is all about, the self, right? It's promising you that you're not really going to die, that you're not going to be damned, that you're, you know, you're going to be best friends with, uh, the, with the indomitable despot, the, the, the ultimate super genie. I mean, it's, it's all about, you know, if yeah. there was no soul and there isn't, then most versions of God are moot because God is just the empty promise mm -hmm. of what's going to happen with your soul. That doesn't exist. Yeah. Cool. It's good being right, on with well, you. Aaron, uh, yeah, it was it was a pleasure. Uh, this was great. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being gentle with me my first time. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing this more often. Uh, I think uh, I am scheduled to also do this next Sunday, uh, but I could be wrong about that. I will leave that up to Jimmy to, to, to decide. And uh, cool. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, close it off there. Uh, stick around though. Amargan, uh, our producer, is going to play some promotional material for the new podcast. And uh, I hope everybody has a amazing rest of their Sunday and a good work week. And we'll see you here really soon. Yes. All right. Wait, so oh. I'm going to, I'm going to reframe this because like I said, we're probably going to put a preview onto uh, the show today. So uh, Eve is about to play on behalf of our patron named Ram. Uh, and if Ra if Eve wins, Ram will get a, a coupon. I don't know what to call it. A certificate to be able to get one unafraid of daddy uh, magical or other. And the full thing is unafraid to disappoint daddy magical or otherwise. It is the super soft t-shirt from our merch store. And if, if you don't win, and by the way, by win, I mean, Four out of the five questions. If you get four out of the five right, the shirt goes to Rom. If you don't, we'll still send Rom a ten dollar off whatever Rom wants. Which, for all I know, Rom would rather have that. <laughs> but uh, uh, a ten dollar off whatever you like um, from the store. So it's five questions. You got to get four right. Okay. And okay. are you? Oh, I'm so ready? nervous. No, but let's do it. All right. Last week, O.J. Sure. Simpson, famous for many things, but mostly famous for getting away with murder, died at 76 years old, meaning that he got to live 41 years longer than his murdered wife. That's right. Jimmy's going to use these questions sometimes to make points. Anyway, during his murder trial, Johnny Cochran famously employed some theatrics with a little rhyme directed at the jury. You will now need to oh complete... God complete the rhyme if it doesn't fit okay. you must blank a quit yes i before you even yes finally i knew something <laughs> wait finally this is the first one and oh. you got it right <laughs> i just mean in life in general to me, i already feel like my self-confidence is increasing already okay. hell yes oh wait i even have uh uh don't i have a i i've got a bell for when you get oh, right yes Okay, cool. Wow, that's really going to make me feel so happy. I even did a little jump on my walk. I hope I nobody saw that. I will warn you, there is a there is an audio file if you don't get it right. Would you actually prefer air horns when you get it right, though? I could do that, too. Okay, I, I, won't, I won't do that again. Uh, sorry to anybody cool. ears, anyone whose ears I just blasted. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, on to question two. This one's the one I don't know if you'll know, I think, because it, it might be too specific. Uh, this okay. month, this month, and from when we actually recorded this, I think it was this week, but Amazon Prime released a new series and first season of a show that takes place on an alternate version of Earth in an America where nuclear energy and weapons have become much more prolific than our world. What video game series is this show based on? 
Okay, sorry. I'm just so excited that I know this one too. Hooray! Because it's Fallout. Hell yeah! I don't know. We've never talked wow. about video games, so I don't know if you know video games. I'm I'm actually not a video gamer, but during uh, sorry, watch during COVID, um, I downloaded the app, the Fallout app. I don't know if anybody else played that. And Fallout Shelter, obsessed. right? Yes, Fallout Shelter, and I had saw like the cutest little Fallout, and all these people, and every day I would like go check on. It was like my Tamagotchi, basically. Hell yeah! Um, I loved that game too, amazing. actually. So, but I want to see the show. I just saw it last night. I was like, oh, what? So the show. Anyways. So I watched the whole first season in two days. It's incredible. Oh wow! Okay, cool. It's well, so good. That's on yeah. my list. Hell yeah! All right, question number three. I'm going to say a statement that someone might use in a debate. Your job is to name the fallacy that is being committed. Oh, fuck. This is where I'm going to actually embarrass myself. Guys, I was homeschooled. Okay, let's hear it. Here we go. What would Jimmy Snow know about morality? He's a dirty atheist. Is is this a fallacy? Is ad hominem a fallacy? It is when... So first of all... Uh, Ad hominem is a fallacy when used to counter an argument. So when your argument is I'm "I'm wrong because I'm a dirty atheist, you are committing the ad hominem fallacy. Um, Fallacy. Okay, cool. Tremendously often (laughs) it's over accused of people every all the time, though, uh, that, oh, that's an argument from or that's an argument ad hominem or that's an ad hominem. And it's literally like, okay, for, for the record. I will always address the argument and respond to the argument. I might also want to insult you. So keep it separate. I'm not always committing the fallacy. I might say, okay, idiot, here's the actual definition of the term you just used. That's different. Uh, uh, So first of all, that is three. I'm going to give you three beeps. I need to fix that where I can do them in faster succession. Uh, I gotta, I gotta, yeah, that was a little slow. Fix that on my board because I have to like hit it and then let it finish. Uh, or, or if I, I, I have to double tap it or let it finish basically between them. Uh, so this is the fastest I could go. That was terrible. So I'm gonna fix that <laughs> so it can be more like the air horn. Bah, 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 bah. You have three points. You only need to get <laughs> one of the next two questions right, okay. and you will have. Oh, now I'm have getting nervous again. One a shirt. The, I think the hardest ones are passed, but I, you will have won a shirt. Okay. For Rom, here is question number four. Multiple choice. Uh, I would like to also now mention that before this, earlier mm-hmm. in the podcast, if you are watching on the preview, <laughs> even I agreed that I was allowed to make these nuts jokes. Uh, publicly. I understand that people who are watching and don't know that she and I are friends might be like, that's a weird thing to do. Uh, we have agreed. What were you going to say? We, we definitely, I was going to say, in fact, I require it. That's on my, what do they call it? Like when you have a list of things you can hand, like as an artist, my writer. Yeah. That's on my writer. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, and only (laughs) blue M&Ms in the green room. Uh, uh, exactly. So. The United States was recently treated to a full coverage solar eclipse for the first time since 2017. In what year will the next total solar eclipse happen on American soil, provided that America still exists? Now, it is multiple choice. A, 2029. B, 2039. C, 2049. Or D, He's nuts. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. Is this a trick question? Do people just like know this? Because to me, this is the hardest question you've asked me. So in the lead up, the reason why I thought you might is that in the lead up, a lot of coverage about it did talk about, hey, don't miss this one because it's the last one it's until next- some number of years, basically. Is it? Well, I know that the next one at all is in 2026. And it's that you're going to be able to see it from eye point, I think, is the deal. Because I'm right. trying to go to it. But so I'm going to go with B, 2039. No, nope, that's the wrong one. Yes! Damn it. No, it was wrong. No. Oh, damn it. The, the, damn, the board, damn it, damn it. I accidentally put the ding on, 
on the board twice. Damn it. That was supposed to be a buzzer. I'll fix it. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. uh, the answer. Well, then I should get that one. It's no. 2049. Isn't it? It's 2045. It's- uh, 2040, it, sorry, 21 years, even though the last one was a mere seven years ago, the next one is uh, 21 years from now in, on American soil, which above American okay. soil would be more correct to say. But I'm so annoyed about the <laughs> I don't have a hey, I guess I have to use. What do I have in the meantime? I could use this. <laughs> That'll be the 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 bad sound for the moment. Yeah, now I have to get this next one right. See, this is what always happens. Is I do okay, and then I the last one doesn't go up. Okay, the last one might this. be I'm tricky, sorry, but Rob. I I don't know. Here we go. <clears throat> oh great! In twenty twenty four, the line, being the amazing channel it is, launched a brand new show hosted by Eve Was Frame and Alyssa Loop. The show is called Chewed Gum, and it's quickly becoming a fan favorite. On what day? Was the first episode of Chewed Gum? Was it A, February 20th, 2024? B, February 27th, 2024? C, March 5th, 2024? Or D, Ease Nuts? <laughs> I'm really upset that that's not the actual answer to any of these. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm having to like dig deep back into my brain to figure out like what I was doing on these days because that's how I'll know. Because I know that the first, basically it was like the first Tuesday I was available, that Alyssa and I were both available next was like from when we all talked about this is when we scheduled it. So I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't you look in your calendar. No cheating. I, hold on. February what were the first two options? I do know it was in February. February so 20th. Helps. And I will tell you all of the options I gave you are legitimate Tuesdays. So February okay, 20th, 2024. <laughs> uh-huh. February 27th, okay. 2024. Or March 5th, 2024. Okay. My sister's birthday is the 24th. And I know it was after that because I was talking about it on her birthday and I'm having a memory of this conversation because having to tell your family that you are starting an atheist show when your family is all evangelical is always fun. So that's the 27th. Oh, I don't know though. Is B your final answer, the 27th, 2024? Yeah, except now I'm like, maybe did we have to reschedule for March? Hold on. What was the other March option? March 5th, 2024. No, it's, it's B, is that 27th? Final answer. Oh, yeah. Except now I'm scared that you're using the wrong thing again. No, it's, I, I'm using both. You're correct. Oh my it God. was the 27th, 2024. Uh, you did get it correct. Rom will be getting a coupon to get the Unafraid of Daddy super soft shirt. Uh, and and uh, now I don't have to worry about what the consolation prize is going to be. I was going to, if you had gotten it wrong, I was going to give you a uh-huh. bonus question to let oh, you recover. Okay. Do you want to know what it was? Okay, good. That's it. I do. Because let's see if I would have. It wasn't going to be multiple choice, though. And it, you might have also okay. found it hard. So now I might be about to ask you a question you don't know the answer to. But. The dates given to you were February 20th, February 27th, and March 5th. March 5th was not yeah. the day the show started. But what was March 5th? I mean, a Tuesday. What do you mean, what was it? What special day <laughs> was March 5th? Uh, was it a special day? It was. Oh, God. Oh, Jimmy, this is your birthday, right? It was my birthday. Yay! I was like, what special day was March 5th? God. <laughs> Not the birthday of one of my friends, I'm sure. No. <laughs> Disgusting. Oh, I remembered. That's I'm, amazing. It takes me years to remember someone's birthday, so. I am utterly, utterly touched. Rom, if you are listening to the show uh, you or I, I'm going to send you a DM. Hopefully you get it one way or another. I'll send you a DM later today. Uh, and and yeah, that's uh, that's the game uh, to people who might be listening to the preview. This is the game, but we've actually been going for 
before playing the game, we were already going for more than an hour. So you've missed out on a lot of the podcast, but this is how the end of the podcast, the final sort of segment before the other thing we do also is read comments from patrons. Now, uh, do you have time to stick around for that? Or if you, if you need to go, it's totally understandable. I, well, my, my partner is patiently waiting in the car and now we have to get to Laos. So I had to miss out on this part, but that's all. Um, totally the next good. time I will. I, but this is so much fun. Yes. I was just going to say the exact same thing. Go ahead. You may. Look it up. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I loved this. This is a blast. I'm glad that you tricked me. Um, I mean, I would have answered no matter what. <laughs> I also did feel like, wow, that's so nice that Jenny wants my creative uh, musings. And then turns out it was actually creating the content, not musing over it. So that's right. Better. That's right. <laughs> I know I, I will be looking for your input here soon. But uh, as as Eve is mentioning again, for those who might be only listening to the smaller part, I did uh, send a very sentimental and but true text about how I would like to uh, more routinely get together to bounce creative ideas off each other as we've been doing that recently. And it's been very effective for me and, and my thought processes. I, and so it I was see. true, but it was also a trick to make sure you would answer the phone. But today. it was also a lie. Yeah. No, it wasn't yep. a lie. What? It was a trick. <laughs> it was I a wouldn't trick. answer the phone no matter what, but it was nice to do a podcast without me thinking that I was doing that before. So well done. That's well right. done. It's all right. You said no matter what, but but I I won't say who you were on the phone with, but you didn't answer the phone on episode zero because you were on a more that important phone call. That is true. To be fair, that I was like in the middle of a Zoom. That would have been a real interesting podcast had I answered it. That'd but great. Uh, I did not. So. <laughs> can you guys, can you all <laughs> wait a so minute? Much. I need to uh, do this quiz. Yes, definitely. Right. Yeah, have, exactly. Have fun at Lowe's. I hope you don't get recognized and you can just have a peaceful time there. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on <laughs> episode one, which is weirdly the second episode because there was an episode zero. Thank you so much, Eve. <laughs> oh, actually, before you go, do you have a Patreon also? Not yet. I'm working on it. It's okay. happening. It will. Next episode that I'm on, that will be the goal is to announce that. How about I, that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you and make you set it up this week, just so you know. Please. I'll okay, help you great. if it needs to be because that, that needs to happen for sure. All right. Great. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Jimmy. Talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Ah, so content. Such a good episode one. Such a fun episode one. I could literally talk to Eve for hours, for days, for months. Uh, And I get to because we are both friends and working together. And so it's going to be just a great, a great time in the future. And I, I feel that this was also just a great episode one. Episode zero was great for the record. Apostasy, thank you so much for being in episode zero. I don't want anyone to think that I'm I I'm not super appreciative of uh, Stacy in the in the test episode. We'll definitely have Stacy back. Uh, but that was an episode where I was figuring things out. It was a little bit shorter, and this one has a little bit more of a direction, a little bit more of a routine, and I'm I'm as happy to see that as anybody else. To tell you the truth. As we grow old, we remember all the times we've had to get... No, as we close out today, I'm going to... Sometimes stuff like that happens. Lyrics pop in as I'm going to say one thing, and I just kind of... I feel like I got to get them out. Uh, By the way, also, if you're watching the preview portion, the uh, little little segment, little, little gifty gift, you missed... I sang on this episode, so... uh and I and for a, a line, I think one line we got Eve to sing as well. I tried to bully her into singing more, but to no avail. Anyway, I'm now going to be so uh, we'll end the show out by reading comments from the prior episode. But the comments we were going to be reading are specifically from Patreon. So if you want to uh, be a part of to have the potential of winning prizes in the future, like Rom won today, or you want to leave comments, you want to be able to do the interactive stuff, there'll be stuff in Discord, and if you want to get the episode before everybody else, Patreon is the place to be signed up because they get the episode basically the day of or very within a very short period of time of recording. Uh, then we let it go out larger than that to our free patrons or our Discord-only patrons two weeks later, but those are all people who are on Patreon. So you can get the episodes for free just on a two-week delay, as a free member of Patreon. And then sometime, usually within about a week, it's going to be, we'll also release the episode 
uh, to channel members on YouTube. But if you want, if you want it the quickest, the best way is to be a paid member on Patreon. If you want it uh, eventually, but free, the best way is to be a free member on Patreon. And if you are a channel member, you like the YouTube other perks that you're getting to bypass slow mode and all of that stuff, you will get it on a delay, but you will get it. So that's that. Let's read these comments and then call it a night. And let's see. So Steve had written, I hear you. This is the best episode zero ever. Monkey had a typewriter wrote, which when I first saw this comment, I, I didn't remember in episode zero, I shared a comment that had been left under uh, a show Matt and I did together where a person is chastising us for swearing unironically, but also swears in the comment uh, and basically requests that we swear less, to which they were told no. Anyway, Monkey at a typewriter said, Jesus fucking Christ, watch your goddamn language, Snow. What kind of shit is this? Stacy is a goddamn delight, and at least she can watch her fucking mouth. Good zeroth episode. Very funny. Love that. Hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to heart these as I go to know that I've read them already. Uh, Steve also wrote, I don't remember what the word bouncy is in reference to. There's no video, so, uh, but it was good, uh, good episode zero. You can go back and listen to that right now on Patreon, by the way. Uh, someone had asked, when will this be available on other apps via RSS feed? If you are a patron, you actually can put it into, uh, there's, you should have in the settings. I, I'm going to have to test this myself by creating a, a, a customer Patreon account and becoming a patron of my own thing to figure out exactly how to do it. And I'm planning to make a video, uh, but they give you a link. So you can actually put, even though the podcast is on Patreon, you can listen to it on your favorite uh, app. And there's also an option to listen to it on Spotify as a paid member. Um, but you just have to put that RSS feed into the app that you want. So say you wanted to add it to Apple Podcasts or wherever you put it in there. Mark says, so much fucking cursing, God damn it, y'all. Great episode, and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I appreciate that. Jonathan says, I hope tech issues become a recurring segment on the show. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Uh, yes, well, we did have the tech issue of my buzzer being a bell. That was the wrong one. It was supposed to be a buzzer. It was supposed to go, uh, but I will have that fixed by the next one. So, you know, tech issues so far, 100% of the episodes. Reba says, can't wait to listen to this when I'm driving to somewhere. Amargan says, producing chewed gum requires a lot of attention to chat for the exact reasons Jimmy gave. Grow up, people. LOL. I feel that will be highlighted even more on this episode. Um, actual socialist trash said, the day after the day before yesterday while I was at work, I was held at knife point by three badgers in trench coats. The gun turned out to be spaghetti, so I played an Uno reverse card and tripped the giraffe into a small box of roaches. Instructing a class on how to make a cake with raisins and lollipops is difficult. Uh, this was the consequences, I suppose, of saying, I'll read the comments out. Monkey at a typewriter says, okay, Jimmy, I'm broke, but I'm not super broke. If I just buy a VR headset, this because we talked about VR last one. Am I going to get, uh, am I going to have to buy like five subscriptions, three accessories and a bunch of software before it's good? Or can I whip this sucker out of the box and get a good value out of it? Also, any recommendation for first VR headset? Lastly, I get nausea with 3D glasses. Any way of telling how sick this is going to make me? All right, I've, I can answer all of these. First of all, if you want the best value, the MetaQuest 3 out of the box has amazing stuff. And I would even say, even just with free software, uh, free games, you can get your value pack. There's one called Big Screen. Big Screen is free and it is the app I use the most. I watch movies in there. Earlier, I watched the uh, the season finale of the show Invincible as though I was in an IMAX theater. Now, that did require it to connect to my computer to stream the screen uh, into it. But having that having that experience, the audio is very good. And it really feels the closest to having a movie theater experience, which is awesome because there are lots of movies that are different in th like they feel different on a giant screen versus a little one. And for someone like me who doesn't like to go to physical movie theaters is amazing. As far as the nausea goes, almost everybody gets over it who has it. Not everyone gets uh, motion sick or anything. I also not only do I get nauseous with 3D glasses, I get migraines, but I don't with VR. 
Uh, I did have a little bit. I, I've been I've been in VR since the early days. The latency was their big problem they had to solve, and they've pretty well solved it. So I would recommend maybe going to Best Buy and trying a demo or somewhere that has Amazon has a return period. Try it out. If you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, return it. But I uh, I use VR. I haven't been able to use it as much recently because of health stuff where I'm nauseous before I get in. But uh, actually, I still sometimes, though, will will lay back in my bed and put movies on it and stuff. I, mean, I don't move too much. It's not a problem. But routinely, I, I most often live in a state where I'm using VR at least five to ten times a week. Randy says, well, that was fun. Call me sometimes. I, I appreciate that, but we probably won't be calling patrons on the show, but I do, uh, I do appreciate that. I don't know. We'll see where things develop in the future, but it's usually a bad idea to call strangers in general, even people who are supporters. Um, but I appreciate that. Phil says, where do I find the RSS link? Again, I, I will do my best to make a video on that soon and release it to patrons. I would love a video that's just Jimmy's Donald Trump trying to do the ABCs. Stacy wasn't the only one dying, LOL. That's a reference to, we talked, Stacy and I talked about how one of the times we called, I, so I do bits for my friends, uh, like, like silly bits, comedy bits, whatever you would call it. And I did one where I was, I called her and I, the bit was that I was Donald Trump trying to sell a, like a, your baby can read sort of thing where he's teaching them the ABCs. It's always A, B, C, D, A is for, they tell me Apple, but I don't know what an Apple is because they don't sell it at McDonald's. So I don't know. Uh, and I did the entire ABCs with her and, um, we talked about that. I didn't do the entire ABC. I, I did several of them, but not the whole thing on the show. But that was a previous time I had called her just as friends and and just was doing that bit. Clayton says, you guys are dope and you do dope shit. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. Azure says, I absolutely adore your personality, Jimmy. The first episode was a pleasure to listen to. We got to hear from a few awesome guests. I love forward to the next one. I'm sending lots of love. I think that means Azure did not finish the episode because we ended up not hearing from it more. I tried to get for episode zero, test calling a few people. Only one, uh, one person was actually available, and that was Stacy. Zodiac says, if this counts, if this is episode count, is zero, or if the episode count is zero, then does the episode even exist? I'm not a philosopher. I couldn't tell you. Casper said that song made me cry tears of joy. Thank you. That's got to be our, uh, our, our podcast song, which we will be going out on here in a moment. Uh, Clever says, I would like to dedicate a list of my favorite swear words to that one douchebag. Number three, douchebag. Number two, fuck. And number one, Dicko Rooney. Love that. And Jacob says, why is Jimmy's health like pee pee poo poo fart penis? Thank you for making that the last comment that we got to. Uh, the answer why is apparently genetics. Uh, my, my condition is, is a genetic one. Anyway, if you want to go back, if you want to listen to the entire episode, you're going to want to be over on Patreon. We talked about a lot of things, including some really off, off the, uh, what is the word? Off hinge? Uh, off the hinges, off kilter. Some really mess, like j really mean DMs I was receiving recently. Uh, I read them out. We talked about them. Uh, we did lots of stuff. We we had a a, a personal questionnaire for Eve, um, talking about different things that had frustrated us from theists and atheists recently, as well as uh, her favorite rumor that she had heard about Mormons' beliefs. She had heard about soaking. We talked about soaking. So. That's going to be the thing you want to do if you're listening. This is a preview. But if you're listening because you're a patron already, holy crap, do I appreciate you. Are you, uh, are you just the best? Thank you, everybody. We will see you here. I don't know when. Oh, that's the wrong one. I don't know when uh, the next episode will be, but it'll be next week. Maybe it'll be this week. I'm having so much fun that if I have multiple good days this week, this week's going to be kind of messy with the health stuff I'm out on. But honestly... I, I'm having more fun doing this than almost anything I've done. So it could be very, very soon. Thanks for listening. See ya.